Hi, everybody. Good evening. Howdy. Hello. Hello. So I think we have everybody, except if Alan Lowry has been sworn in. Yeah, he we took care of that today, and he got the all his forms in, so he's good to go as as the alternate this evening. Okay. Did he ever give you any indication that he might be attending tonight? Oh, here he sure. is. Hi, Alan. Look to the square to your left. Yep, there you are. <laughs> That's great. Uh, okay. Uh, well, with that, um, let's uh, take roll. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go down the list as it appears on the uh, uh, website. Jim Kramer? Here. Tracy DeWitt? Here. Tony Gill? Here. Larry Gunther? Here. John Reuter? Here. David Robinson? Here. Uh, Colin Walsh here, and Alan Lowry? Here. Great. Uh, so with that, we can uh, begin our meeting. Um, do we need to approve the uh, agenda? I see that on our agenda to approve the agenda. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, do, do we need to, we haven't been doing that, but do we need a motion to approve? Yes, well, I, I move I that we approve the agenda. <clears throat> I second. Great. And uh, same same order, Jim Kramer. Aye. Tracy DeWitt. Aye. Tony Gill. Aye. Larry Gunther. Aye. John Reuter. Aye. David Robinson. Aye. And Colin Walsh. Aye. And that brings us to public comments already. We do have public comments. Oh. <laughs> One moment. Great. I, I see that Matt Kiesling is in the participants. And I believe he uh, is. Marissa Fuentes, one of his associates, she's in there too. Okay. Did you want me to move them over? Uh, certainly for when we get to their agenda item. Okay. Perfect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with Marissa because she has her hand raised just in case. Sure. Oh, she put it down. Never mind. <laughs> Okay, and we'll start with Alan Hirsch. And if you just give me one moment, I'll uh, switch over to share your slideshow. And you should be able to speak, Alan. I, the, the screen I see doesn't show my slides, they're tiny, something. Sorry, I just got back a little to the first. There we go. Can you see it now? There are tiny slides, and this is what I'm seeing. I'm a member of the public. The slides are about a tiny little slides. Can I be so, shown on the full screen? They look good, look good to me. Well, from I'm a member of the public, and the public only has one view, and the slides are little tiny things. And so my speaker view with the black is sort of what shows here. So I can see the public view as well, and we do have it on full screen public view. So you may want to switch your settings on your view. Where does it, I see swap, swap, can you, there we go. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm sorry for the confusion, the technology. Um, thank you so much. Um, can you remind me when there's 30 seconds left? Appreciate that. Thank you. Well. Um, disc, disc, uh, the disc project is really important. And it's, it's a chance for us to make a really great success. And we've had lots and lots of projects that have gone forward that have been, not been very successful. But this is an opportunity to do it right. I know they made some 
great promises last time, but we have learned from the Sutter trees that we need to have even more attention on, 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 um, on enforcement. Next slide, please. We need to basically make sure, and I remember, don't rely on the ordinance. We can do things in the development agreement that are beyond what's legal in the ordinance, and the ordinance can be constrained by retrofitting. So we need to basically put things in the development agreement, the baseline conditions that are beyond, above and beyond to get these things in, get these things done. So that's my first point. Second point, slide number three. Um, we need to have an independent arborist. It's in perpetuity because trees are in perpetuity and, they, and you don't get a chance to choose your building inspector. The, 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 the landlord or the developer should not have a say in who is chosen as, an, as, the, as the auditing arbiter. It should be done independent, let's change. It should be, again, we have a problem with enforcement of the city, there's gonna be resources, developers should pay for the arborist. And also if the arborist is contract with the city, that report can then be used as an enforcement document. And the city should treat these trees just like a tree, street trees, they should be inventoried and tracked, not just, whatever happens and the city should track these trees just like that. Next slide. What I've realized is that I'm gonna shift here. What I've realized when I look around the city is tree, we have trees that are failing prematurely because they were not cared for early on. Here's a, here's a tree right in front of Bernard, you see, this, you see the, the two limbs coming off? There's a split there. The tree's gonna fall apart decades earlier. Next slide. This is tree, this tree right across, um, across from city hall. This V thought is falling apart prematurely. It's a Modesto ash. Next slide, please. We've got close to that. And the next slide, please. you go down all over the city, you go down and you see trees that are badly pruned. They were because they were structurally not set up in their first year of life. This was done 20, 30, 40 years ago. And these trees were losing deck, were losing massive amounts of their value because they were not pruned well. We need to take care of the trees early on, the first five and 10 years. So I'm suggesting for next slide is that for our enforcement, it's one thing to have a percentage coverage, but we should have the these auditing arbor that's hard to should have an and should visit each tree annually for the first five years to avoid this thing. And after that, every biannually. And after that, into every three years. That sets trees up well so they'll survive. You need to have survival of those trees. And if the frequency is, and this is suggested by Greg, Greg McPherson suggested this, this thing. And also if a tree dies, the clock is reset. Those new trees are added every year. So there's an incentive for the developer and landlord to make sure the tree survives so they could reduce their arborist bill if fewer trees are audited annually. And the, and the fact is based on if, it's, if a tree is, fails, and we, we play, get a, one chance to plant a second, but if that fails, then you get a fine based on the DBH of the original tree that should have thrived there. And that fee will be, because the mitigation fees are based And we have um, no other public commenters at this time. Great, thank you, Alan. Um, so with that, I think we can move into our uh, regular agenda. And we just have the one item that we continued from the last meeting. Um, and I, I, see, uh, I see your hand, Larry. I was gonna propose uh, uh, how we might proceed but I, um, so let me propose, give a suggestion and then I'm gonna call on you right away. Okay, Larry. Um, so uh, I spoke with uh, Matt Kiesling just before the meeting and I, he is, he is, his associate is here with him as well. Um, he's only gonna be able to attend the first part of the meeting. So if we have any questions that we still need clarification on, we should probably take care of that uh, early. Uh, so while we have uh, the advantage of his uh, deep knowledge of the of the project, um, and also gives him an opportunity, um, you know, if to to answer the questions to the best of the their ability, um, and then what I would suggest is the way we proceed tonight is that we, if there's any questions like that or or any high level overall comments, that we address that first, and then we go through sort of section by section. That's my thoughts. Uh, I'm open to other ideas. Uh, Larry? Um, this is kind of a high level thing. So <clears throat> it's micro, but it's macro. Um, recommendation 15C, um, it bothers me just personally that naming names in that one, um, but also because I am a Tree Davis board member. And so that might be seen as a conflict of interest. And I would just like to see if everybody is okay changing that language to um, local experts approved by the urban forester. 
Uh, John? Yeah, uh, yeah, two, two things. One, in answer to Larry's question, uh, perhaps when we, when we uh, get there, that, that, that would be a good time to do that. Uh, the other question is, Colin, could you just review with the commission what, what progress, what are the end goals for the meeting tonight? What do we have to have done? Sounds good. Uh, so tonight is the night. Uh, if we want to make recommendation, recommendations on the DISC uh, project, um, the city council has asked commissions to have everything done within two weeks of their initial scheduled meeting. And tonight is the last day of the two week period for us. So any recommendations we wanna make on, on the DISC project, uh, we need to finish tonight. Uh, we fortunately, we uh, set up a subcommittee early and, and got started, uh, but we received new materials right before the last, before the last meeting and it uh, and we got some we had a good round of questions of the uh, representative from the project and got just a very high level beginning and then now uh, the subcommittee met again refined the uh, recommendations considerably and uh, put them and and that's before us tonight on the agenda um, I guess uh, what I you know at a high level the you know this is a uh, a project that has to be voted on through measure jrd and so it consists our recommendations uh likely consist of two parts recommendations for baseline features baselines the baseline features are something that's uh within the uh initiative of measure jrd uh that uh the project must have those features and to change those features, it has to go to a revote. So they're sort of the high level immutable aspects of the project. And then other uh, components to the project might be included in the development agreement. This is more like a legally a legal contract between the city and the developer. So you'll see in the subcommittee recommendations that they have notes stating whether they're baseline recommendations or um, they are, uh, development agreement recommendations. And I was reminded from watching the uh, planning uh, meeting that we were all supposed to attend, the planning uh, training meeting, that uh, at the time that zoning is put in place, uh, you there is an ability to put uh, more requirements in, as this is my understanding, uh, there's a bit, the ability to put more requirements in to for the project and that after the project, uh, after a project, after the zoning is in place, the project has a legal right to do whatever is within the zoning. So, uh, having watched this since working on all of this, we're you know, I it made me recognize that what we're doing is exactly that in terms of this project is that we are giving the pre zoning change uh, requirements that we want uh, the requirements for approval. That's my under, my the way I'm coming to understand it. So, does that cover what you were hoping for, John? Great. So, with that, um, are there any uh, questions for uh, Matt, uh, the or the development team, or high level comments? And one last thing I, I would I would add is uh, I. I think what Larry suggested is, a, is totally a fine way to approach this and makes perfect sense. I guess before I do that, Rob, do you have, uh, this is our last meeting with Rob. Is there anything you wanna add before we get started? No, I don't think so. I think that that covers it. Um, if we could just move through the, the recommendations look good in the format and just move through them and say yay or nay. And I think that's that's good. That's great. Okay, so I see uh, Larry and Tracy. So I'm going to go back to Larry uh, and then to Tracy. Larry. Um, okay, uh, welcome to our new commissioner. Um, and I'm just going to squeeze this in because we don't have an agenda item for it. Um, and Rob, our urban canopy is due largely to you. So thank you. And I know even when I was chair, uh, it was not always sunshine and rainbows, but it was, I felt that I, I enjoyed having you as our liaison and I 
um, really wish you all the best. The question I have for um, Matt and I guess Marissa is the other um, really brief. I believe there are four trees existing on the site and is there any plan to remove any of them? That's it. Um, so I think we need to move Matt and Marissa over at this point so they can, uh, and, and if they would like to respond, they can, so they can respond. Uh, yes, Chair Walsh, can you hear me? Yes, thank you so much, Matt. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thank you. I just want to start too by saying thank you to all of you for the amount of time you've given this project. Um, you had a nice meeting on it last time through. I know the subcommittee has put in a lot of work in addition to that and then a special meeting tonight. So we appreciate it. Um, in response to your uh, question, uh, Commissioner Gunther, um, I believe that three of the four are just on the south side of the Mace drainage channel, pretty much within the channel. Um, and I believe that if they can be preserved, we would likely preserve them. The fourth one is a little further down and is likely sitting in the area that will eventually become class one bike trail and walking path. So my gut reaction is that it likely will conflict with future uses that we would put there and would potentially need to be removed. But at this stage in the project, we don't have that precise level of detail. Um, but, but three of them are clearly within the Mace drainage channel, which is going to continue to flow in its current location. So I, I think that they're preservable. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Tracy? Hi, thank you so much. Um, I do have a, a few different questions um, for Mr. Kiesling. Thank you so much for joining us and for all the work that you've done to accommodate um, all of our questions and, and meetings. Um, so I do have a few different questions. They're very random, so I'll just run through them. Some of them are simple. Um, so I was just wondering, in, in your memorandum, what do you define as a planter? Because it says under the um, tree quality, quantities, the assumptions are planters for trees shall have a minimum width. So is this a planter box or is it something that's in the ground? In, in your mind? In my mind, it's in the ground. Okay. It's the, it's the area necessary to accommodate the varietal of tree that we're planting in that site. So if it were in a parking lot, it's what size space do you need to accommodate that, that tree? Okay, so it's in the ground. It's not an above ground planter. Okay. Um, so I was curious about uh, the next uh, dot down, I guess we could call it the second dot. Um, so when it says, I, I just want some clarity on this because there was some confusion uh, regarding what Sherry Metzger said regarding the 50% shade canopy of the paved parking service surface within 15 years. It says here that parking lots must comply. But then when we do talk about the solar, um, you know, you mentioned that there will be uh, trees planted where feasible, um, but I'm confused on this 50% shade ordinance in combination with solar. Um, and I just kind of wanted to get your view on that as of today. So when this, when, well, if we, if we assume that the solar is consuming, let's say 90% of the parking lot, the paved surface, and that would leave only a 10% surface of the parking lot available for trees, and then it would just be 50% of that 10% would meet the city standards. Is that how you understand that? If the question is, is that how I interpret the city's code? I think that what you just said is consistent with how Ms. Metzger said the city interprets its code. Um, okay, I so you, mm -hmm, go ahead. Yeah. Because the 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 what she said, I believe, was that the the photovoltaic arrays would be a structure, um, and there's no shading requirement over structures, right? And so it's that area of the parking lot that is not structured would have to meet the fifty percent shading requirement. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. So um, solar panels are considered structures, and are trees considered structures? Do you know? 
in, in what you no, know? I think structures pertains to anything within the built environment, but I, I'm assuming the city code actually probably has a definition of structure. Okay, so moving on then, um, regarding the residential lots, you don't mention um, how those residential lots are going to be addressed. You do mention manufacturing, you mentioned commercial area parking lots, um, but there, and, and that there, there will potentially be solar in those lots. But what about the residential lots because of the apartments and stuff? Do you plan on putting solar in those lots as well? It's not specified. Yeah, so uh, one of our other commitments, it's, it actually wasn't in our tree commitments, but it is in the sustainability commitments, is that um, every conducive structure um, will be required to have solar. So the apartments will have solar on the roofs and the single family, de the single family product, the for sale product will also have solar, but on the roofs. Okay, so there will be no solar considered in the parking lots for residential. Currently, the way that we've envisioned the residential is we're likely to be doing like um, uh, three over two, where you basically you put the parking on the ground floor and the residential units on top. So the parking is actually underneath the building itself. And that way you're not wasting a lot of your overall acreage for, you know, parking lots for the residential. Um, but if we were to park the residential with a, with a adjacent lot, it would still have to meet the city's code for, um, for parking lots. Okay. Um, so the underground lots are not considered for any of the other building structures, just the residential. Yeah, and they're not technically underground. We're not going subterranean. Okay. But a lot okay. of times the way you do it in an apartment complex is, you know, you have the ground floor, you walk into the lobby, and then the apartment units are above it. And kind of behind the lobby, you have a parking area that's like two floors of parking, right, which sits underneath the apartments. I understand. Okay, thank you for that. And I'm almost done here. Thank you for your patience, everyone. And when it comes to the common areas, um, I was it was sort of unclear to me how many common areas there are. Um, but you did say that um, the common areas um, will have trees for shade based on a 35 uh, foot canopy. Um, but I'm just curious, how many common areas are there? Um, it's not determined at this point, right? So common areas typically are there to serve as, a, um, as an outdoor amenity to adjacent buildings. And so how many common areas you have also depends on how many buildings you actually construct. Um, which really is sort of the next phase of this. As, as uh, Chair Walsh mentioned, you know, we're really at the, the, the pre-zoning of this, general planning and zoning. And then when we get down to actual building design would be hopefully after we have a successful vote. Um, and then we'll come back in and design buildings in phases. So the design of the buildings and the way we lay out, say, a particular parcel will then dictate how many common areas are going to be involved with those. Thank you. Do you. Would you assume that you guys are going to try and put these common areas throughout the development, including spaces where people will be taking, um, you know, breaks from their work and having lunch and stuff outside somewhere close to the building? Those are common areas and you plan on having those throughout the entire development? Absolutely. That's part of the whole, you know, like a campus concept. Right. So you want these communal areas where people from all the various buildings come out and could eat together outside and intermix with one another. OK. Um, and if we can go back to the um, the tree quantities, the, the assumptions that you made on your memorandum um, under the next paragraph were the specific assumptions for each project use. So I was just confused why you went from a 40 foot. Um, it says spacing. Um, assumed for all the roadways is 40 feet on the center. I'm just wondering why you're using 40 to space the trees when 35 feet is the typical. You know, I'm not sure other than it's a 35 foot canopy and I bet that a 40 foot distance with a 35 foot canopy ends up creating just enough gaps that you achieve the overall shading standard. I'm just I, okay. I didn't actually write the memo. It was done by a, a, a landscape architect that works with the city. So I, uh, I assume that what he did is put in business, the standards that are used for most subdivisions and most developments. Okay. If the city uses 35 feet, presumably we would also use 35 feet. I don't think that's in stone. He was just putting in what the standard 
assumptions that he uses with most developments. Okay. Um, and then I did have a little bit of confusion um, regarding the ag buffer. Um, but I'll hold off on that question and just uh, try to get it more clear in my mind and let other people go. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Are there any other sort of uh, high level either um, statements that people want to make about the overall uh, recommendations or specific questions for Mr. Keesling? Great, I see John, I see Tracy has her hand back up too. So John, uh, we'll call John and then Tracy. Okay, yeah, hi, hi Matt, good to see you again. Um, can I just ask you two questions? Uh, uh, the first one follows up on what Tracy was asking uh, about the, uh, the consultant using the 50% tree shading that's, 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 that's in the, the ordinance now. Um, and she was asking about whether it was the city's interpretation uh, or a direct read of the tree ordinance that's determining whether a structure you know, counts or doesn't count for, uh, for paved areas. Do you know what, what criteria the, 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 con, the con consultant used? Did they use a, a strict interpretation of the ordinance which says 50% of the shade or did they use the city's or at least one person in the city's interpretation of, uh, of its 50% of all those areas that don't have structures. So may, let me just repeat that. You're asking yeah. what assumption did he make when he came up with the overall tree number at the end of the memo? Is that yeah, correct? Well, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that as Tracy was pointing out, if you have, uh, if the if if the assumption is that anything covered by a, um, a solar structure uh, is not, uh, it doesn't count in the 50% sh shading re requirement, uh, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a, a big difference than how the tree ordinance reads now where it says 50% of, 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 of all shit, all, all parking. So I'm just wondering what, when he came up with the numbers, do you know, did he use, um, you know, which, which in interpretation did he use? Did he assume that what the city is saying that uh, it's gotta be, you know, 50% of the un unstructured parking lot or is it just 50% of the entire paved area? That makes, that makes I, sense? I believe that in, so I'll, I, I think the answer to your question is in his second bullet where he says the product with solar in the parking lots and he yes. gives a range. So yes. the low end of that range would assume that the majority, vast majority of every parking lot is covered with a solar array, right? Which would okay. mean only uh, similar to Tracy's scenario. If you covered 90% of the parking lot with solar arrays, that only leaves 10% and you need to shade 50% of that 10%. That would okay. be that 600 number. Versus the other end of that spectrum would be, you know, with no solar component at all. And you were shading completely meeting all these standards only with trees. Okay. Okay, great. Just one more other question. If, if, if you have a second, could you just go through for the commission? We, are there parts of the project um, that are not covered uh, by this, by the estimation of the, the, the trees? It was my impression from the meeting that there were certain areas in the project where any tree planting was not was not considered in these calculations. Is is that so? And if it is, could you just could you just explain what those areas are? Sure. Um, I I believe what he did was he took into consideration the entire site. But I think the aspect you're getting at is on page one, the last bullet on the page. He talks about the open space and ag buffer areas. And he says the 100, ag the 100 foot agricultural buffer along the north perimeter is primarily for water conveyance. And so no trees were assumed to be planted within this area. The 100 foot ag buffer along the eastern perimeter will include swales and minimal water conveyance. And so the assumption of groves of trees uh, will be planted within this area. And then the 50 foot open space area and trail is heavily planted. So, um, I do believe that when he looked at the 150 foot wide ag buffer on the north end, 
he made an assumption that the internal 50 feet of that would be heavily planted, but the external 100 feet, he did not put in any assumption of trees. And that was both for the, <laughs> north, the north and the east side, correct? No, just on the north side. On the east side, he did put trees in. Okay, do we have any idea of, um, of the specifics on how that was calculated, what the east side uh, tree <clears throat> planting uh, would be? I, I, I don't, other than what he wrote there is his description, right? Which was one of the commitments we made to the Open Space and Habitat Commission, as well as sustainability, which was, we wouldn't turn this into a forest. That's not the objective. We would have areas that were heavily treed with groves similar to the one that's behind um, Chair Walsh, right? Where you would have oak groves in certain locations, but other areas that were more like meadows and open areas. So that you were creating a variety of habitat types that would appeal to different needs of species that might live there. Okay, Okay. thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Um, just to make sure everybody's on the same page, he's, uh, the, these questions are revolving around the uh, assessment that was done by Cunningham Engineering that uh, Mr. Kiesling provided us and is included in the packet. Um, Tracy? Okay, thank you. I just had t some clarifications on that ad buffer as well, Mr. Kiesling. So the 50 um, foot open um, space area that is heavily planted with 35 foot canopy trees, that is both, or that's on both the north side and the east side, right? Even though no right. trees are assumed to be planted in that 100 foot north buffer. So is because that north side, I mean, the north wind blows, you got all that ag farming, you got all the chemicals and the dust and the noise. And so what in, in that and along that northern side, you've also got all the apartments there. So and the park as well. And so what what does um, what do you your company, what do you plan to do for, you know, mitigating all the noise and the dust and the things that come off of the ag land onto all of the you know, people who are trying to enjoy, you know, their, their environment. Right. Um, that's a good question. Um, I think the answer to that is uh, covered in our mitigations and was part of mitigations that were recommended by the Ag Commissioner when we came through last time, um, which was that in locations where we have residential adjacent to agriculture, um, he recommended looking at ways to mitigate the impacts between the two uses um, with more densely planted areas where we have residential. So on the far eastern, the northeast corner of the project, um, mm -hmm. we would utilize hedgerows. And, and so you would have more dense plantings within the northern portion. The way I envision it is in that section of the 50 foot ag buffer, you have this bike trail that's coming through, it meanders in a walking trail, it meanders further to the south in that location, and you heavily plant the northern 50 feet. I'll also say that the assumption that was made by Cunningham was an assumption that was made for a simplicity of being able to lay out a hundred acre site, right? I mean, he was looking at a hundred acre site that still doesn't have defined locations and he was trying to give us a range. And so he, he made an assumption there that doesn't necessarily mean that's a fact, right? We can, there is an opportunity to plant trees within that hundred foot portion. The maize drainage channel does not take up all of it, and the riparian habitat we intend to create doesn't need to take up all of it. So if we created, if we're creating a bench, our bench could have varying widths along the south side. And so when you got to the far eastern portion, that bench could be not as large as it is other places, which would allow us to plant um, a lot more, say, riparian trees along that portion of the south edge of the channel. Okay. I okay. think I think that really what it came down to though is what we asked him to do was provide for us a range. Um, and so what he did is he, he looked at what he thought was a range and put in what he thought were good assumptions given what we know today with a recognition that when you get down to actually coming up with a landscape plan and designing the site, that number is going to change, right? Because we'll have a lot more specifics at that point. So um, when it comes to the park that you guys have there and is there's gonna be a softball field, did you guys do any research as far as going to say maybe Playfields Park and looking at the trees that are more mature there and comparing them to whatever? Um, I'm just I'm just wondering, did you do any research like that when you came up with these numbers? Sorry, yeah. um, I'm 
I'm not sure I'm. I'm just, I was just, uh, I'm just wondering like, because the way that he came up with these numbers is so vague. There's, there's so, there are all of these assumptions that really nobody knows what these assumptions are because they're just stated as assumptions. And I'm just wondering if he, in his assumption assessments, did he do any on ground ass assessing, like go to a place that is similar to the park that you plan on building? Like there's one here in South Davis, Playfields Park, and it's, you know, softball field with trees next to adjacent homes and things like that. And I'm just wondering if there was any on ground, you know, uh, research. And then my guess is no, but you can answer that. And then I also have another question. Um, if there's one thing that you had to say and like, um, or hold on to, what would that be? Would it be the number or would it be this idea of planting trees appropriately where they're fit? Or is there anything that you really feel like is just something that you don't wanna let go? I'll start with the second question because the answer there is no, I don't think that we are married to anything. I mean, I think what we want is we want a successful urban canopy at this site, right? I think we would love to see that. If you decide that that involves a number or you think the council ought to come up with a number, that's fine. If you think the council ought to go a different way, I think we're okay with that too. But we're not wedded to anything, but what we want to see here is success. We want to see a, a site that is well-designed, well-landscaped, in which trees play a big role. And that we add successful new canopy to Davis's overall urban canopy. I'd say that's the one thing we want to see happen here and we want to make sure we do it right. Um, back to what Mike did. First of all, I was like, Mike works in Davis um, and I think lives in Davis. So, and he's designed a lot of developments in Davis. So I'm going to say he probably has on site real knowledge of what's going on there and has been to the parks. Um, but the way his assumption worked here is we said, Mike, there's a five acre park. Okay. So take a five acre footprint, back out of it, the size of this sports field, back out of it, this retail piece in the corner, back out of it, a multi-purpose sports field here, what acreage is left? And he does that calculation and comes up with, okay, the delta that's remaining is say two acres. Okay. Then how many trees can we accommodate there? He takes his 35 foot canopy and he says, how many trees can we plant within whatever site is remaining that is not otherwise dedicated to an incompatible use? You can't have a tree in the middle of the softball field. Right. So he backs that out and then he looks at how many trees he can accommodate. Now, in the real world, we know not every tree has a 35 foot canopy. Right. Some trees are going to have greater canopies. Some trees are going to have less canopy than that. Um, again, that level of detail isn't what he was trying to accomplish. He was simply saying, what is the range that we think is reasonable here? What is a, a reasonable range if we want to get to a number and if what the tree commission wants to get to is to a number? What do I, looking at the site and understanding what we're trying to achieve, think that that is within reach? That was really what his purpose was. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Great. Uh, <clears throat> are there any more uh, questions for Matt? <coughs> Excuse me. Are there any more questions for Matt or high level comments? Um, and the Tony, uh, if if you have anything, you know, please by all means, we want to hear from you. And Alan, we're really glad you're here. I know that you come with a wealth of uh, uh, experience, and uh, uh, as working on the the uh, uh, Historical Resource Management Commission, and uh, you know, uh, as an architect, uh, so we definitely want to hear from you too. Uh, <clears throat> If you have any questions uh, at a high level, now is a good time for comments. Well, let me just say, um, since I've been involved in some pro larger projects, that um, it's it's reasonable for the developer to be um, cautious in committing specific things. I think it, it's reasonable at this time to to take their words about their their focus and their intention uh, seriously, but it's a little bit unreasonable to ask for a certain number of trees. Um, and, you know, might be might be bad to do that because it's possible that that the project could change to allow more trees than that or or different kind of trees. And, and I think it's it's a little 
there are many steps in this process. And at this step, the number of trees <coughs> can't be guaranteed, but, but there can be a commitment on the part of the developer to do the best he can. And, and I think that what that means is will be uh, you know, defined a little bit later on, perhaps in the next step. And then finally, um, <clears throat> this, um, there's an issue about whether, whether the, the roads in this project and, uh, will, be, will be city, city roads and then whether any of the trees in this project will be city trees. And that, that's another thing that, that can be addressed. What happens on this site can be addressed by um, what we do in the tree ordinance and the tree management plan um, that's, that's in the works. And those, if those are assumed to apply to this project, then, 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 then you can be comfortable with, with what, how, what ends up based on the, whether this project is, is covered by those ordinances. So, um, you know, these, some of these questions are better asked at the next step, but it, it appears that there's, there's a, a firm commitment to, to um, many specific and general things that, that probably are satisfactory at this stage. Great. Thank you. I see your hand, Tony. Ah, uh, yes. Thanks. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, I, I don't have a, um, I have more of a comment, and I think I would like to say that Tracy did a really good job of um, asking questions that kind of convinced me that there is a commitment to um, to reaching this canopy cover and hitting our targets with tree numbers. And while maybe um, an actual tree number isn't um, is it realistic? I do see in some of the sign of the disc responses to the tree commission comments and some of these attachments, like attachment five, we have a goal of 4,000. They brought it down to 600 um, at a minimum. That is a little concerning. So maybe a better idea would be of either a range or a minimum, um, a minimum number of trees, right, that we would uh, recommend instead of a target number. That, because it, I don't want it to keep dropping <laughs> below down and down and down um that's but yeah i, I am convinced that yeah there is a good commitment here and so thank you for um for for walking us through that thank you tony uh is there anyone else who hasn't spoken yet that would like to add anything at a high level or a question for matt before we start looking at the specifics and maybe and if the staff can put the the uh, recommendations from the subcommittee up. I think that'll help us move through. Great, uh, Tony. I think your your hand is still up. I'm assuming it's a residual. Um, so great. sorry. So sorry. No, no problem at all. <laughs> I'm a repeat uh, I just want to. I uh, was just looking for hands to make sure everybody got who wanted to say something got a chance. Um, okay, so starting from the the uh, the top, um, I think uh, the the very first statement is maybe something that we want to come back to at the end. Um, the, uh, if we still agree with it after going over all of the other, uh, recommendations, um, Larry. Um, I was just going to start discussing, uh, recommendation one. Perfect. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so let's see, um, in the discussion, I, um, Alan Lowry's comments are uh, totally heard. Um, one of the issues I've had um, following development projects through the process is that anything not in the baseline project features is negotiable and often disappears if it's a benefit to the city. And this has nothing to do with the people applying in this case, it's just the history of the city of Davis. So I am actually 
Well, in theory, I, I love what the developer is talking about. Um, I, it, I wouldn't be able to feel I had done my due diligence if we don't make a minimum tree number, if we don't recommend a minimum tree number. On the other hand, given the last uh, project process, um, we have a very different worldview of tree numbers than, um, than city council. So I would like to try and get something in, in there. Um, I actually went through and kind of put together what I thought should be in the baseline features. I think we ought to actually have two documents, one for baseline feature recommendations and one for um, development agreement recommendations. Um, I don't know if people want to see that. Um, but anyway, for the number, I would like to say a minimum of, of 800 trees. I liked Jim's discussion at the last meeting. Um, I thought that was really valid. I mean, I want to, we need solar, right? We're this, we just had the big meeting in Scotland where of course everybody flew jets and it, we can't do things the same. And while there are big issues about the project that we don't have any cognizance over or, or purview over, Right now there are like, I think it's four trees on the site and we need to have a lot of solar power generation and we want a lot of trees. So I think, uh, I think 800 is a good number. Um, anyway, yeah, I did, like I said, I kind of summarized the things that were in the, in the recommendations, grouped things into what I kind of wanted to see at the baseline features. Um, everything in the baseline features is printed in the ballot. So length is actually a pretty serious consideration. Um, if people want to see that, I can share it. Um, otherwise, we can just talk about that things one by one. So I just want to, I want to caution people about putting everything in the baseline features. The other thing is that when people start saying, if, <clears throat> how do I say it? If, if the general view is that what we want is unreasonable, then there's no hue and cry over cutting our recommendations. And once you start cutting, it's easy to, it's easy to keep cutting. I'll leave it at that. I'm done, thanks. Great, Jim? As, as I understand it, the way this is proceeding is that we're making recommendations and other commissions are making recommendations. And it seems to me that we should be recommending sort of the ideal case of what we as a tree commission would like and not try and make recommendations about solar that other commissions might want to make. And then at some other level, I guess, city council, they have to sort this out and, and um, you know, come to some agreement between what the different recommendations are. Uh, so, I mean, I, I agree with Alan and, and, and Larry that we need to be reasonable and so on, but as a, let, let's, let's hope that uh, at the higher level, like city council, they're reasonable and we should push for trees. Thanks, Jim. Um, actually, if I could respond to that, um, I mean, I, I see what you're saying, Jim, and I agree with it at some level. On the other hand, I think getting into silos is where we run into problems. If, if everybody maximizes everything in their purview, nothing is reasonable, or, or at least no combination, right? You can't do everything. So, so I think not putting other issues not thinking about other aspects of this project in our recommendations is actually bad. But again, my view. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, uh, Tree Commission One and uh, how we came to that in the subcommittee. Um, so we, in, in the previous, for the previous DISC project, which was twice the size, we recommended about 4,000 trees 
Uh, so the number that we've come to here, 1,500 is, is we've done more than half that. Uh, part of why that is, is the, um, the bike path in the ag buffer is not just uh, half the size because the, the bike path in the ag buffer had a, a jag in it to go around the Mace 25 property. So it's actually notably shorter than, uh, than, than just by half. And I really think that, the, that one of the big driving forces for how many trees get planted in this project is that bike path because a class one bike path in the city is required to have 80% uh, tree coverage. And the bike path goes all the way around the perimeter of this project. So I did some rough uh, measurements of the perimeter of the project and I considered uh, what it would take to, to get to the 80% canopy coverage for that bike path. Um, looking at the south and the west side of the project, I assumed uh, one tree about every 28 feet um, that, uh, to, to get there. Um, and that's, that's about 150 trees right there. But looking at the ag buffer, uh, where the path runs through the, the inner 50 feet, and I'm only talking about the inner 50 feet of the ag buffer, I'm not talking about the outer 100 foot, right? The ag buffer is broken up by the right to farm ordinance into a 50 foot that has uh, public access and 100 feet that, is, um, that doesn't have public access. And I, based on the measurements that I had and based on three trees for every 28 feet, kind of assuming that the path might wander a little bit and that there's a depth to the 50 feet that would allow for three trees every 28 feet. Uh, I came up with uh, it was 165 and, 200 and almost 300 trees. So all together, just for the path around the uh, perimeter of the project, I ended up with a number of, um, of 600, about 600. So, uh, you know, maybe some won't get planted here, maybe others will get planted more in other places, but just the bike path is 600, which makes me think that, that 800 is, uh, is a, would only put 200 other trees in the project, would be a really, a really low number. Um, so that's how, that's a big part of how we got to these numbers is actually trying to measure and break down um, where these trees will go. Um, the other thing is we wanted to recognize uh, that you know, we have a minimum, but you know, maybe they can't hit the, the minimum, but we can still ask them uh, as the council did last time uh, to be responsible for planting, uh, you know, a certain amount of the minimum in a different location if they can't make it in the, uh, on, on this project. And so that's why we ended up with the, the 300 trees that can be planted in another location. Uh, and so, so, we've get, so this is set as a minimum and then we've given them an out even to, to contribute 300 trees to another location. Um, and then the, the last part I'd wanna say is, uh, well, I guess two, two last things. Um, the, uh, why I think there should be a number is, is this, that I, I agree with the recommendations from, tree, from Greg McPherson from Tree Davis that canopy coverage and percentage is, is a higher standard. But after considerable conversation with uh, the developers representatives, it became clear that they're not ready to commit to canopy percentages. Uh, and it's, it's a much more complicated uh, metric to come up with. And so um, the, coming up with a raw minimum number is, is a much easier way to go, even though I think that the percentage is much better. I mean, are they giant oak trees or are they little crepe myrtle trees? You know, the canopy coverage answers that. Um, and then the, uh, I, I'm going to stop there and uh, I see John's, John's hand. And if, if I were, to, let's see if we can wrap up TC1 and keep going, but this is a big part of the whole thing. John. Yeah. So all, all a few points. Um, just so, just so it's clear, uh, my, my opinion, uh, the, the solar aspect of this project, it's, um, it's it's obviously more than 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 solar. You can tell by uh, Cunningham's um, report that they put out. 
that uh, with and without solar could be a difference of anywhere between two and, and 300 trees. If you have solar, um, it's, it's 200 to 300 less than if you had no solar and trees were planted uh, in that, uh, in that, that, that area. Um, but it's not just about solar and it's not just about the uh, energy because, uh, because of the fact that this is a unique project, I believe, in that we're not talking about a shading of a, uh, of a parking lot where there is a, there's a, no, no space. You know, we, I mean, we have these, uh, these ag buffers, we have, you know, the developers, um, uh, I think, good faith effort to, to want to put in parks and common areas and this and that. So I think the idea is that we, um, is that we're not asking for, an un I don't think 1500 is unreasonable uh, given the fact that, um, uh, that, there, e that there, e there is a lot of space for trees, okay? Um, so the second part of that is that the 1500, you should really sub sub subtract the 300. Now we could debate that, and uh, I'd love to get everybody's opinion. Maybe it should be 400 uh, trees that could be planted outside. Okay, but the 1500 is is reasonable, but on the high side. I we I think we we have to admit that it's on the high side, but it's not it's not an unreasonable and unsubstantiated um, number. I think we could argue for that number, but we wanted to stay out of this this potential confusion that Matt was talking about and others that, hey, you know, if there aren't enough trees on site, we just can't have this, this number in there and it's an artificial number and we wanna see what the consultants and the advisors have to say. So I think we tried to accommodate that by the 300. Again, if we wanted to debate that, that would be, uh, that, that, that would be nice. The 800 trees, I mean, they're with solar in parking lots, okay? So that's, if you want to say from a tree's perspective, it's it's the worst of the two options, right? Uh, I mean, their their higher estimate was 900. So with 800, we'd be going a, 100 less than their than, than, than their their higher uh, uh, estimate. And the last point on it was what I was getting uh, with Matt is that right at the moment we don't know how many trees they could plant in the ag uh, buffer. Okay, it's not that far down the road. It's too bad that we can't, that we don't know that for this discussion, but, but we don't, and that's the way it is. Uh, but if you keep on whittling down that number, you know, to 800 or whatever it's gonna be, uh, whatever people, you know, think, um, then the, uh, the, what, the, uh, the ability to hold the developer responsible uh, will be less. So I think knowing that we don't have a landscaping plan for that ag buffer, um, so that's hard to tell. The 300 offsite, their maximum now is, is, is 900. Uh, I, I don't think the 1200 plus 300 off, offsite is, is an unreasonable number. Okay, Tracy. Hi, thank you. Um, I, I hear what you're saying, John, and I, I can't say that I disagree that the 1200 isn't necessarily a wrong number, but first I, I do have to say that I think that we need to commit to a number. Um, I think it's important to have a number, um, otherwise everything's just based on assumption and without, you know, verbal commitments are nice, you know, people are really nice, but, um, you know, sometimes, you know, history has shown us that even having a number isn't enough. So when, when it comes to enforcing our standards, I think a number is really critical in that equation. Um, and I'm going to stick to the 1500 number. I think it's a good recommendation with that caveat of, hey, if you can't fit these trees on this property because of a fire hydrant or, you know, whatever the case may be, and you just can't fit a tree somewhere, then you know, I think it's reasonable to, to plant the tree somewhere else, because um, even though the tree may not be on the property, still everyone in the community benefits from having that tree planted. Um, I also wanted to say that um, solar adds money to people's pocketbooks. Trees don't. 
And so if we don't have a hard number, solar will become the primary everything. And it will take up, it will take up the soil. So I really think it's important that we, that we push hard for a strong number of trees that everyone can benefit from and not just the pocketbook, pocketbooks of those who have the solar. And another thing, there's only so much energy a building can use. And so if they continue just to add more and more solar, where does all that extra energy go? Are they selling it for, for extra funds? That was something that I wanted to ask the developer about. So um, I don't think that a place where people live and work should be just consumed with solar. And that's why it's important to have a number of trees. Thank you. Larry? I think you're on mute, Larry. Yes, I put my hand down, but I didn't open my mouth. So um, a very backward situation for me. So I'm okay if people want to go with that, I'm fine with it. Um, remember, these are recommendations to, we're not bargaining with the developer, we're bargaining with city council, I guess you could say. Anyway, um, I'm fine with the 1500, 300 offsite. Um, if people want to go there, first of all, I would say though, thank you for the clarification on how you computed that number, Colin. And therefore, I would recommend that you send that reasoning to city council because at the last discussion, they just said, I don't know, you pulled that number out of, out of the air. Like, no, it was computed and here's how. So that's the first thing I would like to say. Um, I would maybe like to add a tree commission recommendation 1A that is no trees on site shall be removed. Um, it sounded like three were not planning on being removed and then there was one. This is one very old large tree and at this stage of the game, if you cannot move a bike path around one tree, you're not trying. And this is not a comment to Mr. Peasling or anybody with a project, but, but really. Um, these are old trees. They're great trees. There are four. We, yeah. So I would like that recommendation. That's it. So... Do, uh, do we have the ability with the to work with the staff to edit this document? Is this an editable document? If they let you share your screen, Colin, you could edit it. Yeah, I, I, I have the document up in front of me. I'd be happy to do that. We would like to go ahead and share your screen. That'd probably be better. Oh, and, and that that be part of the baseline feature. So I, I haven't, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, if others have, you know, see things differently, um, please speak up. I just thought I would type it up so we, we have a concrete set of words a, to talk about. A note on flow, um, and this helped the last time we had a big project is, when we get to something, um, I think a, a more efficient way to go is, and this was suggested, I think, by Rob last time, that if anybody has any um, reservations, put your hand up. Otherwise, just move on, because this could be a long night if we all tell stories about every single recommendation. Excellent. So, um, so. Does anyone have reservations about uh, uh, TC.5? Well, the, the way it's written now, it says they should not be removed. Oh, okay, no trees, good. Sorry, I was editing on the fly. <laughs> um, if you could do shall, I would appreciate it. That's a good point. Shall is important uh, language and is binding. Okay. Uh, T 
TC1. Um, are there any reservations or counterpoints? John? Ellen, just a quick formatting. I think as we go through these and we agree, I think we could get rid of the revised um, 2021, 2020. I think that yeah. was just for the, the for our, our, our benefit. So commissioners knew where it was coming from. Yeah, I think we did that to make sure that everybody could reference the old ones easily. Right, right, right. Yeah. So as we move along, I think we can take those out. Thanks. Well, and you might want to save as, and then we could just say recommendation, but remove subcommittee and from the top and we can make this our document. Uh, you know, I have, uh, so this is actually a Google document. Um, I'm not sure I can cut to save as, but I have a word file of it set aside. So make I do a copy. A, yeah, I do have a, uh, there you go. Okay, I, I do have a historical uh, file of this on my computer as well. Great. Um, so with that, I think we can move on to the next few. Um, the uh, TC2 and TC3, we can probably take together. Um, they are um, basically, although we thought that uh, we, we thought that a canopy coverage percentage was higher, we wanted to have the baseline of trees. Um, and so these start to address some of the canopy coverage as well. Oh, and let me just say too, I'm happy to uh, uh, draft something that can go to the council and we may have the ability to bring it back to the commission before it goes. So I'm happy either to author it myself or bring it back if it's appropriate, but we'll have to check on the appropriateness of bringing it back based on the resolution. And I, I actually have a slide that I presented to the NRC with those numbers and measurements. I thought well. we had to have things done by tonight. Yeah, uh, that I think our recommendations have to be done by tonight. I'm wondering if we can't provide uh, support for them later. <laughs> so, but we'll have to check with staff to see if that's possible. But in any case, I'm happy to provide a support document authored as me as well. So with that, um, the TC2 and TC3, are there, uh, does anyone have uh, questions, comments, uh, counterpoints? I'm, I'm seeing a, a lack of hands, which I'm taking to mean that these are good and we should keep going. Great. Uh, so TC4, uh, this is uh, related to the parking lot one. Uh, are there any questions, counterpoints? Tracy? Hi, Colin, I'm sorry, can we back up for just a quick second? Um, I kind of need to talk through this for, for just really quick for TC3, um, when it comes to where people gather and you and it states in our in our here that use public transit or pedestrian walkways, but um, Matt did confirm that um, it should also include common areas. So can we add the word common areas? Because if you look on their memorandum and I those little dots, I just numbered those little dots. So it's number dot eight um, where they reference residential, um, actually seven, it's actually seven and eight. If we're talking about TC two and three, I just think that we need to use the word common areas because that seems to be a, a word that they use in their in their um, development in their project. Does does that address does how I added it in address your comment? I think it does. Yes, thank you. Good, and I'm seeing nodding heads. So yeah, and maybe is it is it possible to say throughout the development? I don't know if that's necessary, but areas where people gather, use public transit, common areas, or pedestrian walkways throughout the development. Thank you. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to keep, let's keep on going to TC4. If someone does need to go back, just say so. Uh, questions, comments, counterpoints, Larry? 
the first sentence, I'm not sure even what you, I think I know what you're trying to say, but only because I know you. 50% um, of the paved parking lot shall be shaded with tree canopies within 15 years? Um, so, This is that language is actually lifted directly from the um, the ordinance that governs it that that we're talking about. So we're putting the ordinance shall required. Shall be what? It's an English problem, I think. I mean, okay, if that's in your it's, fine. I think it's stating that it's going to be with a tree canopy that the. That the the shade the fifty percent it's it's the it's the um, forty point two five point one hundred number F where it states fifty percent of the paved lot shall be with tree canopy and so I think that's all we were stating is that it needs to be with tree canopy not solar or some other structure. So. Uh, Rob, I have a question for you quick, quickly. Can, is it okay if I put the municipal code on the screen? To help us if, talk if about that's this? how it is in the municipal code, uh, we can stop, I'm sorry. I think it's just wordsmithing that. Okay. Yeah, if, I mean, if there is a way to say it better, I'm, I'm not married to the municipal code, but that's where this comes well, from. Well, from an English standpoint, 50% of the paved parking lot shall be with trees, canopies, like shall be what? There's a missing, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and, and that word, that is exactly, I have it up on my other screen. It is, it is a missing word in the, in the underlying ordinance, so. I would, I would have, a, I have a comment about parking lots. Um, yeah. The, um, the developer is equally under pressure to, to provide solar um, at a certain level. I think that's a very Im important requirement by the city. And, um, and likely some of that is required, is gonna have to be on top of parking areas. So if we preclude, if we contravene that um, requirement by the city, which might end up being you know, a, a state law or something too, we might just be, asking for our recommendation to be thrown out. If, if, we, if we are refused to cooperate with other requirements that, that tend to favor solar in parking areas. So just be careful about making rec recommendations that, that will be just dismissed because of um, conflicts with the law or other, other agreements. So this is actually the law there is no law requiring solar over parking lots. The, um, the law requires 50% shade uh, coverage by, by trees over the entire paved parking area. The, the way the city is working it now, and there were some questions early on that got to this, is uh, they are skirting this by saying that the solar panels are structures and that areas covered by structures are not included. Uh, <coughs> as in the consideration for what area needs to be covered by shade. Um, and so we haven't addressed that, but if, you know, if say 50% of the parking lot is covered with solar, that leaves 50% of the parking lot that's not covered by solar, well then the way the city's interpreting it, then 50% uh, then, uh, of the remaining, so 25% of the total parking is required to be covered by trees by the existing city ordinance uh, which actually appears in two places, but I think the the, the underlying one is this 40.25.100. Okay, but that, code. yeah, but that's that's not what this uh, recommendation says. It, it, this this recommendation does not allow for solar panels covering parking lots. Um, this recommendation states the the municipal code exactly. If that's the code, though, why why are there so many exceptions to it? That's so, and that's, I think, and maybe John and Tracy want to address this. I see their hands. Um, the, there is currently a two by two uh, subcommittee 
uh, that is working on rewriting the parking lot ordinance. And John and Tracy, who uh, both have their hands up, are on that subcommittee. And so that's where the um, recommendation that they await the final recommendation from that subcommittee uh, and for, you know, follow that alternatively. So uh, John and Tracy. Um, yeah, just a quick thing, Alan, just, uh, just FYI. Um, <clears throat> We're, we're, this whole process is, 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 is right. We are right in the middle of this, of this process. What we have is, as Colin has here, we have the code as it exists, but, there, but that code is being updated by this two by two, right, with the NRC and us, but that updating hasn't been done yet. So what we're, we're trying to cover, we're trying to be as open as we can here by saying, the only thing we could go by now is what the code says, uh, but we should uh, also wait on final recommendations from us uh, until the, that, that pr process uh, 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 is complete, if that makes any sense. Tracy? Hi, thank you. Yes, I would agree with, um, with what John is stating, that this is an inherent conflict. This is a problem. What you stated is true. And, and so I think that that is exactly what this two by two is supposed to be looking at. And it makes me wonder, and this is just some food for thought, if we should be looking at, because trees are more than shade, and because of the ordinance sort of um, reducing trees value to their shade canopy is a problem because trees provide way more than just shade. They are needed for us to live because they provide us with oxygen. That's just one example. So I think one of the things that maybe we should be looking at is um, the ratio between the amount of electricity needed for the adjacent building and the amount of solar required to, do, to meet those needs. And, and then basing our recommendations on that. I don't know, that's just some food for thought I was looking at. I was considering it, but maybe that might be a way to reach some sort of um, um, recommendation. That's all I want to say, thank you. But again, I think our recommendation on that subject should, should acknowledge that that requirement that you just mentioned, Tracy, that that buildings have be supplied with a certain amount of solar that might require solar over parking lots, um, not conflict with our recommendations. So this should be at least should be acknowledged that that there is this other requirement that, that's in conflict, and and that perhaps we could what we could do is propose um, um, a, so, some method for resolution of that that debate about the, the shading of parking lots. Larry? Um, so the short answer to your question, Alan, why aren't, why is it not like this all over town is because there is no enforcement aspect to the current um, tree ordinance. Um, and as people have said, there is a two by two committee with the Natural Resource Com Commission and the Tree Commission, and both commissions will weigh in with recommendations on the balance between solar and trees, and I really don't think we're gonna get that answer tonight. Yeah, I, I think, you, I do really think, Alan, that you've put your finger right on the problem though, and uh, the, which is exactly why there's the subcommittee to, to, to work it out, that the, the actions of the city uh, don't square with the existing code and so the code is being rewritten. And um, so it's, it is a, you, you really have put your finger on a, a, a real problem. So um, are there other, Tony? Yes, thank you. Um... So the way it is written now, now that I understand the conflict here, and I think there's another conflict as well, but we'll, I think we'll get to it at the end, um, across, at least cross purposes. The way it's written here, if I understand it, is the intent is to leave open the possibility 
if this does get resolved, that it should circle back to the Tree Commission and the CC and the NRC as well. So kind of just being flexible with the language and with our recommendations. Is that, is that correct kind of right at this point? I'm seeing thumbs up and nods. Okay. People who have their cameras on. That makes okay. Then yeah, that's great. I think that TC4 is <laughs> works for me. Thanks. Thank you, Tony. Great. Um, so I guess are there any other counterpoints with this? Okay. So then I'm gonna, we'll, I'll leave it as is and uh, keep moving down. Uh, is there any uh, questions, comments, or counterpoints with TC5? I'm not seeing any hands. I'm sorry, can I just ask a quick question? When it comes to manufacturing areas, is this the area around the building? Basically, it's not, we're not referring to parking lots? That's, that's the way I understand it. The, I think one of the big differences between TC5 and the current and the 2020 TC4 is that we added the language landscape area to make it clear that we mean that the area around the buildings and not the parking lots. Okay, so would that include the common areas? It could be met by, it could be met through the 15% overall could be met through the 80% coverage of the common areas. Okay, because I'm just curious if those are the same, because if they are, it's kind of confusing when one says 15, the other says 80. So when we're talking about landscaped areas, we're not necessarily talking about areas around the buildings that are designed for um, gathering. Those are separate. The, Is that right? I guess, I guess my understanding, and maybe Rob has has more information, um, is that get the gathering areas may if they use those may happen in landscape areas, but it's a subset. That the landscape area is a could be a larger area than just the gathering area. Okay. They just don't talk about it in that, you know, in their in their memorandum, they just mention manufacturing area and, and specifically talk about parking lots. They did the same thing with um, commercial areas. So it just makes me think that in their tree recommendation that maybe they didn't even consider all of these landscape areas. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my pers perspective is that that's a pretty fair assessment. Um, uh, I'm going to keep going down unless there's someone raises a hand to TC6, very similar to TC5, but for a different area. Are there questions, comments, counterpoints? Uh, I'm not seeing any, so if there's, uh, we can throw in TC7 as well. And everybody does see that these are baseline features, right? And nobody has an issue with any of that being baseline features as opposed to, you know, just being a um, recommendation in the development agreement. I see Jim has his hand up. <clears throat> Should uh, some reference to landscape area be included here? Otherwise, uh, you're, you're talking about trees on the top of buildings or in the living rooms or I don't know what. <laughs> uh, sure. Where, uh, where, would it, where, where should I insert that? Uh, maybe 30% tree canopy coverage of landscape areas. Is that good? Tracy? 
Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. I guess I'm just a little confused on these common areas where people rest and gather. And I feel like it's very important because this is designed to be where people live and work. So I would imagine that these common areas where people gather to rest or to eat lunch or whatever it might be are pretty important. And it just seems to be like there are, you know, in TC6, um, you know, pe where people gather and rest, 30% tree coverage. Um, in TC5, um, you know, canopy coverage, you know, in these landscape areas, 15%. And then in TC3, 80% where, you know, people gather. So it's just kind of confusing. I'm so uh, I'm I'm realizing I added the of landscape areas to TC7, which is the parks, but really it belongs in TC6. So I'm going to move that up. Okay. It just seems like if we're going to have an area where people gather, it should just be one number. But I don't know if that's if that's reasonable or not. I'm just trying to simplify. Colin, I think that needs to go forward in the sentence uh, of phrase. John? I, I think it would help if, um, or the way I'm looking at it, is that um, we have different numbers because Every landscaped area around the manufacturing might not be where where uh, where where uh, people gather. Uh, there's it's an area uh, where they're gathering, I believe, and I don't remember which number it is. I think we just went over it that there had to be a, a higher number. Uh, uh, yeah, TC three, right? It says eighty percent tree cover uh, where 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 people gather. So if there's a bunch of benches and tables associated with a manufacturing area, our TC3 says that should be 80% covered, but the entire thing as a whole, if there's landscaping on the other side of the building from where people gather, then that only has to be 15. So I don't think all these areas, I think if we think about it, that all these areas we're talking about aren't necessarily where people gather in those in those in residential or commercial or, or what, whatever. So I think that's the way I, I'm looking at this. And the, the specific for where people are going to be, benches and tables and so forth, uh, we have that under TC3 as, as 80%. Per, per, percent. So I'm um, suggestions for how that happens or Well, I don't know, but maybe um, somehow just not using where people gather so freely. I mean, but it doesn't matter, I guess, if it basically comes down to 80% according to TC3. I was just trying to really make sense of these different areas. And I had a list going, you know, housing, mixed use, office, R&D, commercial, hotel, all 30%. And then manufacturing, 15%. Um, and so, but then there's the 80% also. I don't know. It just got confusing to me. So, any actionable suggestions, John? Yeah, it's my impression that, uh, and this is before I came on the commission, was that these numbers, these percentage numbers were uh, made under advisement with the uh, with Tree, Tree Davis. Um, so um, personally, I, I trust their expertise if that's true, what I'm saying. And so my action item would, well, I think we've, uh, we've, uh, we've uh, covered things. I think when it finally gets down to it, as Matt saying, when they have more plans and, 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 and so forth, uh, then, 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 then these things can be worked out. Sounds good. So, uh, so uh, to speak to the Tree Davis origin of recommendations, it's 
uh, it's easy to con to uh, confuse the or make it uh, uh, Greg McPherson and Tree Davis synonymous um, in the uh, in the discussions for, before the previous disc. I spoke with I think about eight different experts, including uh, Greg, and Greg uh, came up with the percentages in those discussions. Rob. Yeah, I mean, to John's point, if these are all baseline features, they cannot be worked out later. They're going to have to go back to a vote if those percentages change. So these are hard numbers if you want to add them into the baseline features. You can't work them out later. So that's just a point to keep in mind. Yep. Excellent point. So, Larry? Actually, this is uh, Alan. I don't know if my last comment after yours was sounded harsh. I was starting to think it sounded harsh. If it sounded frustrated, I was frustrated because of actually the point you brought up, not not because of you or your comment. Just wanted to say that and be clear. Okay, got it. Sean. So before we uh, before we wrap up all these 80, 20, 50 percent things, uh, maybe a a discussion of what Rob said uh, is in is in order, uh, so we don't lo lose that fact that um, that uh, say, knowing what he just said and thinking about it, uh, we could end up ham uh, hamster stringing our ourselves uh, if we say it's a it's it's a baseline feature by not giving us a, any room to uh, to sort of. Uh, talk more as these plans de develop. So I would, at least this point, I'd like to put it out for discussion that, that we may not include these percentages, uh, uh, well, all the percentages as, as a baseline, maybe for the, maybe for the, uh, the bike paths and the, where people are gathering the common areas. But, but, but all, all, all these other things, maybe we should uh, th th think about the, the merit. Alex? These are these are all recommendations for inclusion in the base baseline definition. Is that correct? Uh, the some of the the some of them are some of them aren't. Where they where where they are for the baseline, it says shall be a baseline feature. Okay, so but we're making recommendations uh, along these lines. However, if a recommendation we have is in conflict with something else, then, then we don't have any control over how much of our recommendation is retained, I would imagine. So, you know, we, you know, I, I think the more that we acknowledge that they're competing interests, the more likely that our, our ideas will be blended into everybody else's. Yeah, Larry? You're on mute, Larry. Oh, there we go. You actually just said more eloquently what I wanted to say. So my hand is down. <laughs> Great. Um, so I guess I have a, a suggestion of potential rewriting. Um, and looking at this, I see this where people gather is maybe overly broad. Um, so maybe that should, should come out. Um, and it could say, instead of use public transit, which is also overly broad, it could say unsheltered transit stops. And then, then it would be, this would be much more specific. Larry? So following up on what John said, I mean, yeah, so for those of us who have been following development projects for years and years, that is the distinction between baseline features and development agreement is, is pretty clear, but it also took me a couple of years to figure that out. So on your comment, John, I think that's actually a pretty good one and that keeping them simple and also what Alan was saying, keeping them simple. So um, yeah, maybe just the percentages. On the other hand, going back, if it's not in the baseline features, it kind of doesn't exist. And so maybe just having the percentage coverage on bike paths, open space, blah, 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 that, that one in the baseline features, I'd be okay with that with the, and, and, and the 15, 300 and 
Um, and then something about enforcement and something about management plan in the baseline features. I think those are the real, real keys. Cool. So do you want, you want to give me, a, a, okay, so I, what I'm looking for too is um, specific instruction for editing. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I'm trying to juggle uh, chairing and editing and uh, so, I don't so want to. Colin, yeah. Colin, can I make a recommendation? Yeah, so let's, John let's, go back to, yep. let's go back to, um, to TC2 and we just have a sort of yes or no, whatever, thumbs up, thumbs down. Which of those, which of those, um, which of those percentages we think should be included in baseline, and which ones shouldn't be? Actually, actually, um, if I'm going to jump in just because, sorry, but go ahead, Larry. Yeah, make a section, maybe make a subheading that says baseline features, and when we hit something, and not only will we talk about the verbiage, but we decide whether it's a baseline feature or not, and then move it into that section or not, and then everything that's not in that section is a development agreement and everything that is, is a baseline feature, that's a possibility. Yeah, so before I go to you, Tracy, I just, I'm, I'm gonna talk process. So in our previous recommendations two years ago, we broke um, up our recommendations that way. And after it went through staff, the whether it was a baseline feature or a, um, a different kind of recommendation was, was basically not uh, translated through. So we wanted to include the baseline feature language in here. Um, and I think when we get down to the enforcement, it gets slightly more difficult because the elements of enforcement may be the in the current recommendation are baseline and elements of enforcement are um, our recommendations for development agreement. So if we break them apart, we end up separating related topics, right? So it's six of one half dozen the other of how we approach it. Last time we approached it the other way, uh, this time we have it this way. Um, I think if we try to re-scramble everything and we're gonna end up having a much bigger editing project tonight. Okay, I'm fine. Yeah. Cool. But I, I totally appreciate the recommendation and that was exactly the way I thought through it last time. Tracy? Okay, so I'm just kind of trying to clean things up a little bit. And if we're talking about common areas and places where people gather, where people rest, the conflict to me seems to come in the difference between around housing and your mixed use, your office, R&D, manufacturing, hotels, commercial areas, it's all 15% and uh, actually 30% in some areas and 15% in the other. So it seems like except for parks where it's 80%. So, and bike paths. So is that pretty much what we wanna say that in parks and bike paths where people gather, well, people don't gather necessarily on the bike path, but on the bike path, 80%, where people gather in parks, 80%, and then everywhere else where people gather, 30%. And then 15% in just areas that are around the building, but not necessarily Fairly where people where people gather, is that how people are reading this? Am I asking too much? I don't know. I mean, we I don't want to start revising everything, so I'll I'll stop. I mean, I just I wanted to just make sure that it was clear to everybody else because it's kind of confusing to me. But is it just me? I see John's hand. Yeah, well, the, again, the way I'm reading all this is that where people gather, whether it's uh, at a bus stop, um, whether it's, 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 again, at picnic tables, at chairs, you know, wherever people will sit and gather, uh, including the common areas and so forth, that's, that is 80%. So to me, that means where people are going to be standing around, we're providing the maximum shade for for, for them, and I, I think that's that's my take on on. Okay, on. then if that's what we're going to do, then in TC six we should probably change that thirty percent to eighty, 
because it says designated places where people gather or rest should also have 30% tree canopy coverage in 15 years. And that's around the housing. So do we want 30 or do we want 50 there? Or 80, I'm sorry. Because in TC7, right there, it says where people gather 80%. So is it that we want more coverage in the parks or do we want more coverage around where people are living? Okay. Or both. Um, do you have your hand up, John, or is that- Yeah, a yeah, just, yeah, I, Tracy, I think that's a very good point. It's, it, it, went, on, it went under my radar. Um, I think we could, just, uh, we could just leave out in TC6, leave out that whole second sentence. Um, that designated places where people gather should be 30% because that is covered under 80% under, under TC3. So I think that whole sentence could come out. So in TC3, do you want to put all areas where people gather? So or no. um, I'm going to answer on TC3. I actually think that the concept areas where people gather is incredibly vague, um, that it could be people gather every, you know, uh, people could be gathering anywhere. So uh, especially in this one where it's not even defined to what part of the development we're talking about. So I, I like my recommendation, but I noting that I'm also editing, I didn't wanna like overstep and edit unless others agree. But I, I think we should limit this, to this one to uh, unsheltered public transit stops, common areas or pedestrian rock, walkways and remove the areas where people gather from this recommendation. Okay. And that helps with the others as well. So, um, so designated areas where people gather, meaning that there's benches, picnic tables, designated areas where people gather, uncovered public transit areas. Unsheltered or uncovered public transit areas. Um, um, you know, I want to fix areas in designated. Um, let's see, designated areas where people gather, uncovered public transit stops, um, pedestrian walkways. Did you want to leave in common areas or do you want more definition there? So the common areas was something that you just asked to have added in there. Oh, okay, I thought it was something you didn't want in there because it was too big. Uh, the, the develop, I think that the uh, material from the developers does talk about common areas. Mm, that's how they reference it. Yeah. Okay. I, I could go either way. So I'm fine John, to leave it. John? So Colin, not to get too picky, but I've seen a lot of uh, public transit stops that are covered and people are, 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 are waiting at from uh, outside the, the covered area. So I would just say public transit stops. So people who can't get under that cover can still be protected. Okay. So I think I, I have the sense that we've that people are probably in a better spot with TC3, and then maybe we should look at uh, at the, the the next set. Um, the one thing I would note is with TC7 is that um, with this one talks about 80% tree canopy coverage where people gather, um, or, or other park amenities where people gather, and I think that that's specific to parks. Right, that we're not just talking about anywhere in the development here. We're talking about the amenities and parks where people gather will have shade cover. Yeah. How are we doing here, Larry? 
I think you need to make an exception for sports fields since those are designed for gathering people, but we. I'm not sure what you mean, Larry. Um, I wouldn't, I mean, I think that um, this is specifically saying benches, tables, I mean, you could put um, bleachers so that people know that we're not referring to the center of the ball field. Well, it says park amenities. Hmm. I would think that a ball field would be a park amenity. Yeah. I, I think that's a good point, Larry. Uh, does that address your, your point? I would just say accept athletic fields. I just wanted to say too that in my review of this, the toughest part is these first few, the first few pages. And then it seemed like the, the last few we just breezed through. So that was my take on it. I just wanted to say that so people don't get too uh, burnt out. Cool. So are we good in this area? Are we ready to keep moving down? The TC8, um, the 80% cover is uh, what's required for class one paths. Um, so the, what I would say about TC8 is that in the previous proposal, there was a, um, a path. But so, so there's a city right of way that's just exactly, that's just north of where the new Nugget headquarters is along the edge of the agricultural field. And in the previous proposal, there was a proposal that there be a, a bike path that connect through there. And there's in the, which I don't believe is in the current proposal. Um, Marissa, if you, if I'm off on that, please feel free to raise your hand and correct me. Uh, but there is a proposal, I think they are talking about doing a bike path on the inside of the curve. Um, uh, for, for May. So this is talking about thing uh, paths that are not on the disk site. Jim, I see your hand. So would would this be considered part of the 1200 on-site trees or the 300 off-site trees? So I think the idea here uh, is that this, that the um, minimum that we've established for on-site of either the, the 1200 or the 1500 is not met by these paths because they're quite long paths and could take several hundred trees just for the paths. So the idea is that this is separate depending on what they do. And we're not sure what, if, what I think, and Marissa, you please raise your hand and let me know if you wanna clarify. We're not, it, it's not clear that there's going to be a path along the easement, but maybe BTSSC will persuade them. Uh, it's not clear what kind of path there will be on the inside of the maze curve. It's not our place to decide whether there is or not, um, but that what we're, I think what we're trying to do is you know, cover ourselves that that those don't count towards the on-site trees. Okay, so, so this would this would be in addition to the fifteen hundred. This would be in addition, and if there's a better way to word it, feel free to suggest. Tony, I see you have your hand up. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Speaking of, of wording, it I was just thinking there's maybe possible if I'm reading it correctly. So we're on TC eight, correct? Um, just some copy editing uh, changes. I. Th I think right. walkways should be plural. All new bike path slash green belt or pedestrian walkways that connect to this project. And I'm not positive. And then after 80% um, tree canopy cover, um, there should be, I think, a period there. All new bike path, green belt, pedestrian walkway that walkways that connect this project to the rest of Davis shall have an 80% tree canopy cover will be in addition to the, so I think, um, 
maybe period after cover and then get rid of will be and then capitalize in addition to something like that. I don't know. In, sorry, comma, comma after cover and then get rid of will be and put in addition to the 15,000 or 1500, something like that. The, yeah, I think that's good. May I suggest that it should say um, cover for these paths will be an addition or cover for these paths east of Mace? So, ah, yes, yeah, that makes sense. Oops. West. <laughs> That, does that help, Tony? Thank you. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And the rest of it looks great. Yeah. Well, any other comments? Well, after Mace, you need a shell. You want the traditional spelling of shell or the three L spelling? Great, Tony, I see your hand still up. I'm, I'm guessing it's residual. Is, do you have anything you wanna add? Nope, cool. Sorry. thanks. Okay. I, I, my sense is that we're, we're done with the canopy coverage area and we're gonna move down into, the, into what's the protections going forward area. So TC9. Tracy? Yeah, I was just wondering, do you think it's important to say in there? Um, okay, so it reads, the project will have a tree management plan. The tree management plan will also, I'm sorry, will allow for each tree to have an assigned number I, um, to easily locate and identify specified trees. Um, would it be beneficial, do you think, to add um, in the sentence, the tree management plan will allow for each tree um, to have an assigned number um, so that it can be easily located and identified. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Never mind. Thank you. Sorry, had to talk through that. Cool. Good. And I think we're just, this is brought forward from before. I think this is one of the ones that didn't really change. Okay, uh, moving down into 10. So well, I know, I'm sorry, I know what I yeah. wanted to say that it had to do with, um, so easily, easily located and identified um, in order for proper maintenance or um, something along those lines, proper management. I just wanted, I wanted there to be more explanation as to why it needs to be located and identified. You know that it's important in order for um, enforcement, for maintenance, for pruning, um, just to make it easier. I don't know if that would be because I haven't ever gone through that entire process. But is that necessary to add that? So I'm not seeing any hands, so I'm going to respond. Um, I guess I would say there's a uh, for every one of these, we could probably write paragraphs. Okay. To support them. And I would, I guess I would encourage people to, to write paragraphs about the ones that they feel strongly about that can then be sent to the council to help bolster why we have chosen these things. Yeah. Jim? Yeah, my, my reading of, of TC9 is that it's implicit and it's pretty clear why you have those trees numbered. I mean, I don't think, that, uh, personally, I don't think that we need more than that. That's good to know. I, I guess I was curious to know what other people thought. That's fine then. Thank you. Cool. So I'm not seeing other hands on nine. So moving down into 10, uh, 10 then has some sort of related parts that follow. Are there any uh, comments, questions, uh, counterpoints to what we have here? Edits, copy edits? I see Larry and Tracy. We'll start with Larry. Yeah, I would. Um, 
I would remove the and after consultation with the developer in both, at least two places. Um, yeah, and the arborist will submit a written report to the city arborist and the developer. Never mind. So that stays. Yeah, I don't see why the city should just pick the. Yeah. <coughs> So I'm gonna strike through them in case anyone has a counterpoint. Is there a second place? No, I saw a developer later, but it's, they give a report to the arborist or maybe that should be urban for, but anyway, we all know what we mean. Um, yep, nope, I like that. Okay, Tracy? Um, I guess I, as far as I think it's important to have consultation with the developer when it comes to um, the inspections, but I'm willing to forgo that if people don't see that to be an important component, but um, I just wanted to point out that this is the first recommendation that is um, basically just an ask. There, you know, and ask with possible consequences, but it's not a baseline feature. Um, but it's a pretty critical component. You know, it's just it's suggested in the development agreement. I just wanted to talk about it a little bit because the whole, um, you know, establishing a tree in those first five years is very critical. And as Alan pointed out earlier, the maintenance of a the pruning on a regular basis at the at the appropriate time is very critical as well. And sort of all that hinges on this arborist. So I don't know, just wanted to put that up for discussion. Larry? Um, yeah, so I hear what you're saying, Tracy. I wish all this could be in the in the baseline features, but frankly it can't be um and so all the all those things are basically if if city council and city leadership has the political will to do that they will do it and if they don't they won't and so i'm i'm a big fan of keeping the baseline feature requests minimal to try and actually get them in as opposed to putting the whole document as a baseline feature and getting it summarily rejected. John? Yeah, I think, um, I, I, I still think we need to go back and, and, and discuss this for these things, uh, but um, <clears throat> as it exists now, but uh, I'm, 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 I'm tending towards uh, Tracy's point of view. I think, I think if they don't, if this wasn't agreed to, I mean, Let's put it this way: the city and the developer agreed to it last last time. If that's if that's good enough uh, that we don't have to include it in the baseline, uh, I don't know. I've never experienced the baseline versus the the development agreements, but I think this is a really important part of the uh, of the recommendations we we have, and it's likely to be a very important part of of similar recommendations. We, uh, we, we, we have going down the road. So it seemed to me that if no one could agree to this and this isn't in there, uh, then I think that I, I don't think that would that would really work out well for for the for the, the, the role that we want to play. And even more than that is the, this whole thing about uh, in enforcement. We all we all complain about enforcement. And this is this is one of the closest things to enforcement that we could do. You know, uh, so so I think we should. We, I I think I think it sh it should be changed from project development agreement to a, a baseline condition. But again, knowing that we'll go through the document and 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 and, and get rid of the excess excess baseline, as Larry is suggesting. Great, Larry. I'm sorry, Jim. Yeah, you know, if I understood Tracy correctly, I'm sympathetic with what I think she said. Um, it seems to me that on some of these issues, there could be extenuating circumstances and so on. And it might be 
useful to have consultation with the, the developer. Uh, I'm not sure if it's required, but maybe, so I'm not sure of the exact wording, but <clears throat> anyway, I'll leave it at that. Great. I see your hand, Larry. I'm going to add one small comment and then uh, call you. And then, uh, uh, so what I would say is um, things that are on a ongoing basis or in perpetuity that require action, like, a, a, you know, meeting every two, you know, surveying every two years on, on a but inspection on a biennial cycle um, is there's a lot of circumstances that could change over time. And so it's probably better in my opinion that those be contractual agreements with the city in rather than um, ballot election items. Larry? Again, so everything that goes into the baseline features will be printed in the ballot, everything for the whole project. And right now these, this document is longer than the ballot initiative for a development. All, the stuff we're asking for in this is we are also asking for in the tree ordinance. And so if the, if we get that change into the tree ordinance, we get it anyway. And if we don't, we don't. And we are making recommendations to what the city council will do. So that's all. Okay. Uh, so I think we have kind of two threads going that we're discussing here. The, uh, where it's, where this should be, uh, included, should it be a baseline feature or not? Um, and the question about consultation by the developer, um, I guess if it were up to me, I think I would keep the strikeout, uh, so that I, I'm agreeing that, okay, there would be consultation with the developer and that this would not be baseline, be baseline, that this would all be con contractual. Um, Larry? Yeah, so my point there is not that there shouldn't be consultation with a contractor. You, this does not preclude, striking out that language does not preclude hmm. talking to the contractor. I just, I just think the people that are judging the trees, that are measuring the trees, that are doing the surveys, should, that should be the decision of the city and should not be the decision of the contractor. As Alan Hirsch has pointed out in several comments, the contractor does not get to choose their building inspector. It's the, it's, and that's actually city staff. So that's where I was going with that. Count me persuaded, John. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I, 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 I totally agree with, with Larry and Colin and you. You know, all these things, this, this line is not about consultation. This line is is about um, about that the city and the developer have to get together to figure out who they will bring bring, bring on as the as the, the the arborist. All right, so um, exactly, and I'm saying that it should just be the city. The city decides. Right, yeah, right, exactly. The other part is um, I don't. I have to be honest. I don't know development agreements that well and baseline features, so I, I'd have to defer to the uh, the people. On the commission who who do so what, whatever the expertise re re recommends I'll, I'll i'll go with it uh tracy hi thanks um i just wanted to say that um i appreciate the the developer acknowledging that they're going to plant trees according to their best practice and according to city standards um but it's really not good enough and i think that um I think that, I think, okay, I think the developer should, or the, the project manager should have a say in who is coming to do the inspection. Not that they have to make the decision, but I think that they should have a voice in that decision because it is their property, it's their development. Um, I think that they should have a voice. Um, and then um, I think that, I think because the next, let's see, starting with TC10, and going at least through TC12, it looks like, no, maybe TC11.2, 
All of these things have to do with consequences. That has to do with maintenance and consequences. And, and none of it is in a baseline feature. It's all just in the project development agreement. I think that some of some of something needs to be in a baseline feature. And I'm not against, you know, condensing all of these TC one, two, three, all of these into, uh, you know, one or two pages, because there's a lot of repetitiveness, but I don't know if we're up for that tonight. Um, those are just my thoughts. Thank you. Okay. Uh... So I'm not seeing more hands on this and I, I'm seeing kind of a split decision. Um, so I guess I'm kind of looking for a, a like a straw poll on um, if this is a, it belongs in the development agreement or in the baseline feature. So uh, I guess, uh, so I'm just gonna kind of uh, run down our list. And, and if you could say, baseline feature or um, de or development agreement when I call upon you uh, that would be great and just to give you a heads up Alan this isn't a, this isn't a this is a, just a poll of thoughts this isn't a, a binding vote so uh, we would like to know your opinion as well um, so uh, Jim Kramer I don't know enough about these things, so I, I could go either way. I guess I'm inclined to try and keep things simple and put this in the project development agreement, but I can go either way. Cool. Tracy? Thanks. Um, I'm, I guess I'm leaning more towards um, just based on historical issues. I'm looking for something a little more concrete when it comes to um, the consequences. And so maybe TC10, just that first one, maybe that something, just that portion of it maybe in the baseline agreement that there will be a third party arborist, that there will be inspections for the first five years annually, that there will be, you know, proper pruning after five years, you know, all those types of things. Um, and then all the TC2, you know, 10.2, 0.3, leaving those to all project um, agreements. Tony? Yeah, thanks. Um, I, I have, um, have to agree with Alan. I don't have a strong opinion about this. I don't, I don't know actually what the right answer is. And I think just to make it easier, I think the, it's a choice between baseline and, baseline and development plan, probably the, de the development plan. Cool. Larry? Yeah, I, I'm, I would go toward development agreement because I think we're trying to rewrite the tree ordinance in, this, in these recommendations. Yeah. John? Uh, I will. Uh, I'm, I'm the same as Jim and, and Tony. Um, I, I, I don't know the, the difference. All I can say is that I think this is, as I said before, this whole concept is a very e e important c c concept to have. And I think, um, well, maybe I'm changing my own mind. I, I, I think that um, I think that for the public to know that this was an agreement uh, uh, that there would be an independent arborist. I think that's an important thing for, for the, for the uh, voter to, to know. It might give them some, some confidence. So I think at least part of this whole uh, uh, independent ar arborist probably should, should, should be in the project baseline, if nothing else, but to, but, but to give the, the, uh, the, 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 the voters some, some important information. Okay, David. Yeah, I'd like to see it in the baseline. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave myself last. And Alan. Well, are are we being asked to make specific recommendations for baseline and then for the developing the developer agreement, or, or, or is, is that something we're supposed to do? Break them out. That's a re, that's a good question. The our the request to us is not as specific as that. 
but our recommendations uh, previously were broken between baseline and uh, development agreement. And ultimately the council can choose to follow our recommendations or do something different. Um, so yeah, it's important that, that our comments about the project are, are known. Um, if we're not asked to, to break out the level of detail um, according to uh, the stage of the project, then um, it may be probably some of these some of these things like having an independent arborist should be in the baseline. Other things need to be in the development agreement because they need to be blended into other solutions that will solutions to problems that don't exist yet. In, in other words, when the density of the project. Uh, becomes known or the size of the buildings or the number of houses or the number of um, uh, people on site on a particular day um, become known, then it's time to start allocating resources to this to the proper solution. Um, but I would I would say that we um, just need to, you know, basically our mes messages to <clears throat> respect trees, include trees, Take care of trees, um, and you know, pretty much maximize trees based on the opportunities. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I just I think that the more specific we are, I mean, like having having the idea of an independent arborist. That's a general great idea that that will that will give rewards over time. But the more specific we are about certain things. Um, the the less likely it's going to be able to it's less like less like it's going to be in the baseline um, project and there's and there's but but it's something to negotiate during the the developer agreement. So I don't know. Um, be aware that some things <clears throat> might be considered. Um, um, not ready to talk about yet, you know, with with the, between the city and, the, and a developer. That's all. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, uh, so my thoughts on this, uh, which have developed thanks to hearing all of you, so I, I get the opportunity to um, process the thoughts uh, based on the input from all of you here, which is, um, I think. A compromise is that we divide it where the cursor is so that the part above that we recommend as a baseline feature and the part below that where we start getting into annual cycles, etc. We recommend for the project development agreement and we break we separate it. So we have a TC 10 and then this becomes TC 10.2 and then follow on down. I'm seeing nods. Um, I like that. I like yeah. it. I like it, Colin. Cool. Okay. I think the strong message to send is that these trees are important and they need to be cared for in a proper way throughout their entire life. So I feel like that resolved that first that that question. Um, do, did we come to a resolution on after consultation by the developer? Um, I think I, what really swayed me on that is we can remove the language. Um, so including the language requires that it be with consultation with by the developer. Removing the language um, leaves it open to being done with consultation by the developer. So uh, I'm, I favor removing at this point. Uh, if anyone is counter to removing, so uh, raise your hand and please speak. Okay, not seeing hands, I'm gonna go ahead and accept the change. Okay, and that brings us down to the, to the next series here. So Colin, can I just uh, say something? When, if you go back up to TC10, do we have to change that upper part of it that says, uh, uh, oh yeah, base, baseline conditions? 
Good point, John. Good. Thank you. Hey, Colin. And then, sorry, can, just to make this a little more consistent, in all the other ones, you have this shall be a baseline feature, and all the other ones at the end of the paragraph. Can we do that? Just so it's consistent, easy to just find it. Yeah. Thanks. Good. I see your hand, John. Are you, is there something you're wanting to say? You're muted. Okay. So moving down to the next section, I'm going to update the numbers, but as I do, please uh, raise your hand if you want to talk about uh, 10.2. or three or four. Should we assume that in TC 10.2 that the urban forest manager and the arborist will set these properties um, related to tree growth, health and maintenance and management according to the um, city, you know, whatever we call that thing that we abide by. What's that called? The ordinances or something? The, yeah. So should, does that need to be stated or is that just assumed? I mean, that, that, that's a, basically like saying uh, you shall follow the law, right? John? Yeah, I think that uh, it's a good point. I think that as we go down in, uh, in one of these TCs, uh, some specifics are, are, are pointed out. So I don't think we wanna, and they're pointed out because there may not be an ordinance or anything else for it. So. Uh, I, I would recommend not to in, in include that in this uh, until we read that part. If we decide we need to, then we, we need to. Yep, that's fine. Thank you. The, the other thing, Colin, on this is it says, um, uh, did it say something? Okay, TC 10.5. Uh, we said that up above, right, under TC 10. Should we, uh, should we not re re repeat ourselves? That's a good point. And maybe we we'll take it out of TC 10 because it seems to be uh, added on to a much broader concept of the plan in general. And or wherever we have the trees, uh, we have that someplace, didn't we? Oh, we have it in the up here. Yeah, right. So if we take that out, uh, that sentence, the tree management plan will allow. So we would strike this. Yes, because it, it's it's under five, ten five, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you just strike ten five and leave it in the one where it's already at? Yeah. So we would take this one. Yeah, that's redundant anyway. Yeah. So Rob hasn't said anything all night. I, I want to do exactly what he says. <laughs> Okay, so we've left it in uh, with the management plan and we've taken it out down here. Um, are there any other comments on two, three, and four? If 
not seeing any hands. Um, we've been going for a little over two hours. Um, I guess I think I think we're 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 going to make pretty quick progress on the next part. But I, I guess I would suggest we take about a five minute break, uh, so everybody has a chance to uh, take care of biology. I like that, Larry. Cool. Great. So uh, it's 7.50 now. Let's try to be back at 7.55 or 7.56. It's 7.51 now.
as folks come back, if you can turn your camera on for a minute or raise your hand or otherwise let me know that you're here. Here's Tony. <laughs> A lot of stuff going on in the background earlier. <laughs> Kids running around. Nice. <laughs> so I think I saw Jim a second ago. Jim, are you here? There you are. Okay, looks like everybody's back. So moving forward, um, I think we I think we wrapped up with the 10 2, 10 3, 10 4. Is there any counterpoint to that? If so, raise your hand, otherwise we'll we'll move on down. Tracy? I just noticed that doesn't, am I wrong in this TC.4 and TC.9 um, talk about the tree management plan and basically repeats itself and could those be combined? I guess or what I would say is um, that uh, TC, TC9 requires that there be a management plan and 10 point, TC 10.4 gets into what happens if they don't follow it. So okay. one's a baseline feature and one's in the development agreement. Okay. Excuse me, Colin. I just wanted to let you know that I switched the screen share. So you'll want to reshare your screen again if you want to. Oh. Send this Thank Sorry you so much. That. You know, I noticed that you did that and then it slipped my mind that, yeah. And we're gonna do the rest blind, it'll speed things up. No, really, what I have on the screen is perfect. Cool, okay. So, so there's 10.4, uh, the number nine was basically unaltered from what we had before, what Tracy was mentioning, it basically requires the, man the management plan, whereas uh, 10.4 is what happens if you don't comply. Any other thoughts on that before we move on to 11? I'm not seeing any, So, and I'm gonna go ahead and kill this one permanently. There we go. Oh, what, wrong way. Okay, TC11 in its three parts. Any, raise your hand if you have counterpoints, comments, questions. Tracy? Hi, thanks. So my concern on this one was who identifies the tree failure. And that's where the arborist comes in. And so I think that in the sentence where it says, it's like the third sentence down, that tree will be identified. I think it needs to state during the annual report or during the, I guess, it, I don't know if it would, I don't know. I just felt like it, it was missing that but then maybe it makes up for it in TC 11.1 .1 by saying recommendations by the arborist. Larry? And, then, and I'm sorry, and then I was wondering like in TC 11.1, um, .1, does it's gonna go to the tree commission, but does this, does this mean that the developer potentially doesn't have to pay for the replacement if the tree was dead due to neglect? Larry? Um, I just, this kind of looks like we're trying to write city policy and I guess in a sense we are. Um, 
I would actually like the city of Davis urban forester to identify dead trees, but I hate to throw a wrench in the spokes. I, I see your hand, Tracy, or uh, if you're wanting to talk, and John, I see you just raised your hand too. John? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> I, I, this language may eventually go into code and it may go into to policy, uh, uh, but I don't see anything wrong with, with that. Um, uh, also, I think that one of the purposes of having the third party uh, arborist is to reduce the um, to reduce the burden on the ur ur urban forestry uh, d division. So, and that arborist will be out there doing doing everything else. So, so I I I, I think that that third party arborist is fine, and the language is fine too. And we've the language we have currently is that the city is appointing the third party arborist. So it basically is alleviating uh, uh, work for Rob 2.0. I see your hand is up, John. Is there something else? No. Okay. Are there any other points or counterpoints? on 11, 11.1 or 11.2. Hey, Colin, I got a, just a clarification. If this is an annual report, but yet the dead dying trees have to go to the tree commission, does that mean that people are gonna have dead trees on their lots for a year? That's not really good practice. Um, we could change this to, or urban forest manager. Um, I see John and Tracy. Oh, your hands just went down. No. Do, well, or do you, well I will. I just wanted to know if Rob had another suggestion. Maybe to follow the tree modification permit process, because that's what's going to follow under anyways. And then the annual report could go to the tree commission as an informational, but um, to leave dead and dying trees for a year, it, that's just a safety hazard that shouldn't be. So do you think the tree, if it's under five years, could potentially pose a safety hazard? Well, that's not what that says, but if you want to put that in there, that would change the dynamic of that recommendation. Well, maybe if we just did that then and said, um, if, you know, and to, to just make that clear that if it is a hazard in any way that that be tended to right away. Um, I, have, I have a suggestion here. What if uh, we, after on-site tree removal, we add in, in addition to standard city process, comma, so that there is a way for it to be removed through the normal process as well. Sounds good to me. I just wanted to say too that I appreciate Rob's perspective and that if there is anything else that he sees where there could be a conflict like that, especially where people's safety could be at risk, that. We appreciate those comments. Is that, is that better, Rob? Do you, should it say, should it say something more specific? you're on mute if you're we're saying yeah it. i'm just um Should i was looking more, i was looking more at 11.1 .1, the one below because this the one that one says at any time during the five years after the original planting date maybe that could 
say any time before. That ends up, I'm not sure. There's, you could put that. Where, where would it go? And down in 11.1 is where I was looking at because it just says recommendations by the arborist to remove dead or dying trees that pose a health and safety hazard beyond that that need to be presented to the tree commission and follow the procedure in chapter 37. Yeah, there's redu some redundancy here too, isn't there? I see, I'm looking for solutions, so. Uh... John? So, so Rob, are you just, are you saying basically we should be dividing this up into the first five years versus the, the post the post five years or establishment period? Is that what you're you saying? Uh, you could. It would be easier that way to have those trees in the arbors report be brought before the tree commission for removal rather than um, it doesn't state that down in eleven point one. No. So what, so what, let me, Rob, let me ask you just a, a common practice question here. Um, on a project like this, would the city come in? Well, it really gets to what Alan, uh, Alan Hirsch was saying. Are these, are these going to be city street trees? Are they going to be, you know, what, 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 what are these trees? Are, are they city trees? Are they, are they private trees? And what would be the inspection? You know, would the city come in there? on their own more than once a year to inspect trees or do you get most of your uh, your tips on on bad trees from uh, from the from the from the uh, public i mean that's yet to be determined that's not even close to what is going to be decided through a measure jrd vote so I wouldn't go in and just inspect the property. It would be more from the, the arborist report or the property manager that would come and do something like that. Right, so, so just to get this clear, uh, uh, in, my, in my own mind, when you were saying that um, if a tree is, is as a hazard, uh, one year for a health and safety hazard tree would be, would be too long of a, of a time. So I guess, I guess what I'm asking is, all right, the, uh, the inspector comes in, the arborist comes in in March, and then by whatever the end of July, the tree has now become a hazard, and he's not gonna show up to the, till March. What, 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 what would be the process for, uh, for identifying that tree as a potential ha hazard? That would be up to the property manager and who's managing that that site. So there's going to be not going to be one overarching project manager. It's all going to be broken up into different projects and probably property owners. So it's going to be up to that property owner to identify that. Okay. And so, it's what the modification permit process is for. Right. Okay. So if I'm if if I'm not understanding this right, please forgive me and correct me. So then, any comment about a, a tree that pre prevent provides presents a health and safety issue hazard uh, would be unacceptable if it hung out there for a year between the visits of the arborist that that really wouldn't happen because that would be uh, that would be identified when it when it was an issue right so it, it wouldn't be an issue if the arborist only came once a year for and identified trees right um I wouldn't want I don't like dead trees staying more than a year, if at all possible, where, you know, parking lots or where people are, there's a lot of targets that would be a little long, depending on the tree species. Right, but you're saying it would be up to the, it would be up to the property manager, just like it is now. It's up to a private individual, it would be up to the property manager to identify the tree, which may or may not have anything to do with the, the, the arborist's schedule, right? It's just not going to be this 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 uh, tree failure, if you will, or hazard, this this really doesn't depend on the arborist coming out once a year. That that's going to be re, re reported, no, no matter when it happens in the cycle of the arborist. So I'm just you know I mean perhaps I'm confusing. 
E what 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 you said? Um, I, I have a suggestion for, um, that might help here. Um, what if what if we changed the, uh, TC eleven point one like this? What if it it read requests from the arborist or property yeah. owners to remove dead or dying trees? Yeah, that works for me. Thanks. Does that work for you, Rob? Sorry, Colin. Can you repeat that? Yeah, um, requests by the arborist or property owners to remove dead or dying trees and continue on from there. I can, I can type it in as a track and you can see it. I mean, that's good if, if you want to look at dead trees, that's fine. Yeah, and that, so I, I started with that part of the suggestion. I, I have a second part, which is on, based on the assumption that chapter 37 will be written in an appropriate way uh, as to what goes to the tree commission, we could remove tree commission from this language too. Well, Colin, my thought on that is that we don't we don't know what's going to happen with the, the, the ordinance. And so I, I personally would rather keep that in here um, and not hope that the, the tree ordinance is the thing that, that we, we wish it to say. Again, each of these things, they could be, you know, it's just a recommendation, you know. Any, uh, anyone else have a thought on this? David, all, you have many uh, years of experience looking at tree removal requests. Do you have any thoughts on uh, if we should include tree commission explicitly in this or? Uh... I, I don't think you need to phrase tree commission explicitly, no. It'll end up there. Uh, yeah. If needed. John? Yeah, David, if I could just ask you, um, um, the uh, say, say like the, the Sutter trees, the Cousteau trees, I mean, that, that didn't come to us. Uh, at first, it was it was forced to come to us, but uh, but I'm, I I I don't know why this project would would be any different from those, and that if people want to take down trees on that project, that that wouldn't come to us just like none of these other projects come come to us. I don't have an answer for that, except for I think those were unique situations. I guess I, I I definitely sympathize with your thoughts. Oh, Jim. So on eleven point one, you're talking about follow the procedure in chapter thirty seven. If these trees are not city trees, then they wouldn't come to the tree commission, would they? I mean, they're they're sort of like some private tree in somebody's backyard. That's a good point. Right. And, and it's exactly for that reason that, um, you know, I, I don't, 
I don't necessarily think it's a it's a bad thing to uh, to keep it in. Yeah, I think if it doesn't come to the tree commission, then if these are private trees, they can do anything they want to. They can cut them down whenever they want. No, that they, it's going to be under commercial property, so they would need a tree modification permit to take them down. It's not like a backyard. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Jim or John, uh, you both have your hands up. I don't. Uh, I'm not sure. Just a just a quick thing. So, but Rob, the 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 form and the application you're talking about, those don't necessarily come to the tree commission, do they? No, they don't. Okay. So we're saying here, if you guys are going to uh, uh, if you guys are going to cut any trees down. Because of health and safety, we we you know the, the tree commission would would would, would like to, to to have some 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 input on it, and so I, I realized, and that was my comment before. I realized it's too early in the process to declare whether these things will be city trees or not, but I think that uh, that having this in there uh, allows for the uh, for the flexibility, and I know that. I know that the commission, or it seems to me that the desire of the commission is for, for bigger projects. And we actually uh, wrote a recommendation in the, the tree ordinance uh, that the consultant is working on that projects with over five acres or over 20 trees, uh, they, they, they will come to the tree commission. So since this project meets that, uh, that requirement, um, I think it's good to keep it in there also because of the fact that that tree ordinance has, has not been a, 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 a approved yet. If it was approved, then, then we wouldn't need to have it, but it, it isn't, so. I don't think there's gonna be five acres of dead trees though. We're talking about after the project is done and in, and you're specifically just talking about dead trees or hazardous trees. Yeah, yeah we're, we're not talking about five acres of destruction uh, in, in that comment. We're what we're talking about is, is we don't need to consider every small little tree removal on every small little project, but we're saying if a project has over 20 trees on it, or if the size of the property is over five acres, then, then the, uh, the, uh, the request to remove trees would, would come before the tree commission, whether it's, it's, it's one tree or, or what, what, whatever. So I, I don't think we're saying that they're all gonna be dead. It's just that we we expressed in there, and I think the the commission already vote, voted on, is that one of the things we wanted is for these larger projects, which we defined, uh, have uh, have the ability to, uh, to 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 comment on 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 on, uh, on 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 tree removal, unless it poses a, a health and safety. And Rob, you 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 do this routinely, you know, you you sort of report back on trees that needed to be taken care of before the commission had a chance to, to comment on it. And so that rule would, 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 would still hold. That's the procedure in chapter 37 uh, for city tree re removal. Um, so, that, so that would be covered. And I think we're just, what we're saying in here is just what we had asked for when we all voted to uh, make the recommendations for the, for the, all, for the all ordinance. So uh, uh, bear with me. So I had this great history teacher in uh, high school and he said that the definition of, uh, of a uh, liberal, a conservative and a radical were, was that uh, if you had a nail in the wall, uh, a conservative wanted to keep the nail where it is. A liberal wants to bend the nail in a different direction and a radical wants to remove the nail. So based on that, I wanna make a radical suggestion, which is that we remove this clause altogether because it basically just, other than the part where we say, have it come to the tree commission, it basically says, follow the law. Um, this is a place where we could simplify our requests a little bit and uh, we should focus on trying to get the recommendation we want for, for uh, projects into the, into the ordinance. And frankly, I don't think as a, the, the tree commission needs to look at every dead and dying tree that sometimes dead and dying trees are, and as particularly ones that pose health and safety issues, 
need to be addressed in a more expedient way than on a monthly tree commission cycle, uh, which is what the what the chapter 37 allows for. So, uh, so I'm going to suggest that we actually take out TC 11.1. John. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I would keep it in there, but I'm not going to hang it up. Okay. Larry? I'm fine with taking it out. Okay. Uh, yes. Tracy? Yes. Yeah, I was just, um, I, I, I see both points of view, and I was just wanting to say that I think the reason was of having this is just as a way to ensure that those trees and their first five years of life are not going to be neglected and left to die like they did over at um, the cannery. You know, they were just left there bound and, and not able to grow properly. And I think that we're just trying to ensure that these trees make it past their first five years in a healthy way. And if we can ensure that by, and, and not, you know, include this paragraph, then that's fine with me. Larry? Um, I see what you're saying, Tracy, and I totally agree with it. And I think that this does not say that. So maybe it should say it more explicitly, which is, um, uh, wow. I mean, we have to take out dying trees, right? Like. We have we take out dying trees. So if what we want is to is to not lose trees by neglect, then then that's what it should say. I mean, right? This is talking about remove dead or dying trees or trees that pose a health and safety risk beyond recuperation like why would we sit on those those are those would come down so if we want to save trees from not dying from neglect then we should say something like trees that have died due to neglect in the opinion of the city of davis urban forester will have full mitigation required from the property owner. Larry, just to point out that we're, we're just about to get there. That's, that's under 11.2. Um, um, and well, uh, Colin, I've changed my mind. I think we, we can eliminate 11.1. Great. OK. Uh, so if there's any counterpoint, speak, speak now. Um, I, but it's, it's, I'm not seeing any, so let's uh, keep going. And I think 11.2 says exactly that. Is there anything else on 11.2 before we roll, roll along? Okay. Okay, 12. Any thoughts on 12? So do we really want to have all tree plantings throughout the project drought tolerant and climate ready? Do we mean to say that every single tree on the property will be that? Or do we want a little more flexibility? I see you nodding, Larry. Um, I, I personally would like to say that the city is developing uh, their tree list and Rob will correct me if I'm wrong, but that is that it contains climate ready species and not just contains them, but is only climate ready. I mean, we're Water is not only a precious resource in and of itself, it is um, every drop of water requires power and so 
I, the best way to get trees to survive is to get trees you don't have to take care of. So that's, I like that. Tony? I, I totally agree with that. And, but I would like to get some, maybe some clarity from Rob or someone else on whether this aligns with the city's agenda as well. All right, all future trees planted in the city are, you know, climate ready and uh, drought tolerant. Is there any, that's all, that's, yeah, that was my main, only like small concern with that. But otherwise I, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with this as, a, as an individual, yeah. Rob, do you have a thought before I call Tracy? Do you want to? And we're we're heading that way. I mean, most of the things we're planting are either drought tolerant or somewhat close to that. Yeah, Tracy. Thank you. I do understand the reason behind the drought tolerant. I'm just concerned about how that, you know, I'm concerned about unintended consequences and how, you know, focusing in on, I'm not even sure how many trees there are that meet this criteria, but I'm just concerned about the diversity and how that affects things on multiple levels that we're not considering. Oh, you know, uh, I have a thought too, actually. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, I, I see your hand too, uh, Jim. And uh, oh, you put it back down. But I see your hand too, Tony. Um, no, there it is. I see your hand too. But um, I'll make this comment and then can carry on. There's a there's a drainage riparian area that may actually be pretty wet at certain times of the year. Um, that we have that maybe we aren't thinking about when we think when we write this. Uh, the word that other that I think that the developer used and what the open space was predominate the palette. I guess that's two words that um, maybe drought tolerant and climate ready trees pr are predominate the palette. So with that, uh, Jim, Tony, then Larry. So um, presumably these trees are going to be around for a while and. If uh, if we don't plant climate ready trees, you know they're they're going to suffer and die, and it's not going to be any prettier, you know, in terms of what uh, Tracy was saying in terms of the diversity and so on. Um, if we say drought tolerant and or climate ready, uh, that might take account of what Colin just said in terms of uh, you know in in places where it's by the riparian zone or something. Uh, they could be climate ready uh, and not necessarily drought tolerant. Yeah. Tony, then Larry. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yes, after Rob's comment that you guys are moving in that, the city of Davis is moving in that direction. Um, I think we can leave it as is and I'm comfortable. I'm 100% on board with it now. Thanks. Cool. Larry. This is like 12 angry men. So um, Rob, I actually have a specific what if. So there was some talk of planting cottonwoods along the like the drainage areas and stuff. Cottonwoods are not, I, I, I don't think um, they're a drought tolerant species. Um, they are a riparian species. Does, if, if we were not allowed to plant anything but drought tolerant climate ready species, A, could we plant cottonwoods? And B, do you think a cottonwood would do okay in the drainage area the, the you know, if we're diverting all this stuff into the drainage ditch? I mean, Rob, do you want to respond and then Jim? Yeah, that would be in kind of the open space areas, which they would be fine along the drainage areas. I believe that's what's out there now in a willow. So if it's surviving now, it should survive with more water that's going through the drainage channel. So just to follow, but, but if we say climate ready drought tolerant, does that include willows and cottonwoods? So I think it says, nope. 
drought tolerant and or climate ready. And I think if they're by the drainage ditch, they would be climate ready, not necessarily drought tolerant. So I would think cottonwoods would be okay. I like Jim's suggestion. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to throw one other thing out there and that's, we could put, we could put the word native in there. It could be uh, native, comma, drought tolerant, comma, and or climate ready. Jim? Um, a uh, research report from maybe a year ago from UCD was entitled Becoming Phoenix, I think it was, or Becoming Arizona. Um, there are a lot of trees that are native now who would not be drought tolerant or climate ready, and there are non-native trees that would be climate ready. So I'm not sure, you know, uh, it's, it's native to what the climate will be in the future. Yeah. Tracy? Hi, thanks. I was just, you know, researching the web when it comes to, you know, just focusing on a few species and it talks about bacterial bloom in the soil. So those are the types of things that I just want us to be cognizant of when we're putting so much emphasis on just non-diversity. You know, considering I understand the need to preserve our water and you know climate and all of these things, but I, I do think that we need to allow a little bit of flexibility, even if it's just ten percent of some diversity. But I, I think it's I think it's important to add a little diversity and not just have it be all a specific type of tree. That's it. So, so that's another, I think that's introducing another concept, but I think we could include it by saying um, all tree plantings throughout the project uh, must, will be diverse, drought tolerant and or climate ready. No, it's actually, seeing, that becomes a non-restriction, sorry. Yeah, okay, good. So then well, maybe it's a, too much to add that idea here. Can we just say something like all tree plantings throughout the project or um, 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 what, what words did you use? You said um, the palette, um, uh, what was it that you said, Colin? Predominate the palette. Yeah, so how about we say something like the drought tolerant and climate ready trees shall be the predominant, shall predominate the tree palette. And, you know, and then there will be a minimum of the 200 locally native and um, diversity when applicable or not. Do we not need to say that? Is it just assumed? Jim? I really, I mean, maybe this is exaggerating a little bit, but I really don't see the point of planting trees that are going to die in 20 years just to be uh, diverse. I think we want to plant trees that are going to survive. So, okay, so we're assuming that all diversity trees will die. All trees that are not specifically intended as drought tolerant trees are going to die in 20 years. Is that what we know? Or is that just what we're assuming? So, uh, John, I see your hand. Yeah, I think it's not a bad assumption to say that in the life of a tree, 60, 50 to 100 years, uh, you know, that if everything keeps on going like it is, um, that drought tolerant uh, trees won't, won't die. I mean, I would, I, I have no reason to believe that drought tolerant trees will live uh, over the next lifetime of a tree, uh, given the way things are, are going and my lack in faith in, in, the, in the greenhouse gas re reductions. So I think, so I would agree with Jim. Uh, uh, you know, I don't think that drought tolerant has to, and Rob, I like Rob's input because I'm sure he knows this. I, I don't think drought tolerant well, Rob, the, the, in your in your experience, does is, is is there only one or two different species of drought drought tolerance, or is there a fairly a fairly good diversity of drought tolerant trees? 
Um, there's a pretty decent list. I mean, Secretary yeah. Foundation has a, a pretty good list and yeah. Yeah, so I don't think that we have to, uh, I don't think we're uh, sacrificing diversity for, 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 for drought tolerance, especially since at least in my opinion, that if it's not drought tolerant, that, that, that tree won't last, the, it's, 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 it's intended lifetime. Larry? Okay, that's fair. Larry? Um, actually, John, that language may get us out of the bind. Trees that are, trees that do not have, I don't know how to make, uh, trees, no tree shall be planted unless there is a high expectation of it living out its full potential life. I'm going to type that in here as its own thing, uh, just as a thought, so we, it's easier to discuss. So Larry, Larry let me just ask for a, a clarification. Do you think that's, that sentiment is implied in the use of drought tolerant? Or do we need to spell that out? Or is that what drought tolerant really means? I think it's the other way. I think drought tolerant is implied in that. So here's the thing is we don't know. Okay. One minute California water. The biggest reservoir in California is groundwater. The second biggest reservoir in California is the snowpack. The global warming uh, climate change is, is, will affect the snowpack. If we, so estimates are one degree centigrade increase in average temperature in the Sierra region reduces the snowpack by 50%. If the snowpack is reduced by 50%, we're done. So we may, but that doesn't mean we won't get water. It means we won't get snow. So we won't have water to use. The problem is we then pump groundwater. Where I'm going with this is we might get plenty of rain, but our system is not built around rain. Our water delivery system is built around the snowpack. So if we reduce the snowpack, we can get a lot of rain and it won't do much for municipal or farming water, but it may well, like surface water might actually be increased for parts of the year. These are the things we don't know. Um, although, you know, the last few years, which is weather, not climate, um, things are not looking great for increased rain either. So I just think the more general statement allows, I don't know, allows flexibility. But I, I'm, I'm either way, I, I'm kind of fine with it. Yeah, you know, I would argue, um, Larry, I, I agree with everything you've said. Uh, it's absolutely true with the snowpack and everything else. Um, as far as a recommendation that people can enforce, that they could do, that they could implement, I think saying uh, drought tolerant or climate ready gives them something that, that they can do and be held uh, uh, accountable for. I mean, I think your sentence is, is in general, it's the 35,000 foot uh, re 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 reality of it. But when you come down to uh, requiring people to do things on projects, uh, the whole thing of uh, a reasonable expectation. I think there's, it's true and conceptually it's correct, but I think it, 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 it just brings up uh, gaps. And I think just to say drought tolerant or climate ready uh, really fills those gaps and yep. makes, makes people do it. I'm fine with that. Okay, uh, Tracy, and then I'm gonna go after Tracy. Yes, I agree with everything that um, Larry said, and I agree with what John just said. And I appreciate everyone taking the time to discuss that whole diversity issue. Um, but it looks like it just we're right back where we started. So I'm I'm fine if you. I would be. Uh, I would like to remove the um, what, what Larry has suggested putting in where it starts where you know no tree and ends with natural life because I do think that the drought tolerance sort of explains that already, but. Anyways, I'm, I'm fine either to leave it this way or to revert it back the way it was and to move on. I'm fine striking my language. I think John's point is the key here. It's enforceable. Yeah. Okay, so I, I agree. And I just wanted to take a second to tell you all how much I enjoy 
uh, the depth of the discussion and how deeply everybody cares about uh, trees within this group. So thank you all for that. Uh, so with that, I think we've I think we've gone come for full circle with the one change of and or, and that we can move on from here. Uh, not seeing hands, I'm going to take that as a yes. Is there any way that we can just add and or climate ready trees with emphasis on diversity within that, and so that the developer doesn't just focus on one type, or was that, or do they not do they not do that? So that's just emphasizing diversity within the drought tolerant climate ready. Okay, thank you. Is there any objections to that or counterpoints? Okay, uh, it, adding that also neatly moved TC13 so I can scroll better. So this is a, this section is about the ag buffer. Jim. Once again, it could say uh, drought tolerant and or climate ready trees. Here, where I have the cursor. No, it's on the line, the next line down. Drought tolerant and or, yeah, right there. Here's our predominate palette language. Mm -hmm. Any, any other uh, thoughts? Larry, then John. Um, I love the sentiment. I love the idea. I want it to happen. I would not put it in the baseline features. The baseline features are already really crowded. Yeah. Okay. John. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to get everybody's opinion um, on thirteen one. I know Matt was talking about that they don't want this a forest and some other commission or whatever said they don't want it a forest, uh, but I'm going to, at least my opinion is, is that we, is that we leave that in, in there. Uh, you know, these, um, these, these orchard like or lollipop farms of trees, you know, they're, they're, um, I don't know, they they, they just seem to lack if you drive up on, uh, uh, uh road uh, 102 there's a bunch of areas in the fields where these breaks with trees these long linear rows of trees that really are in an orchard like uh, planting but they look more like a like almost a riparian if you will there's there's just a line of trees like a forest and i just want to uh, i just want to point that out nobody may have a problem with with our version of 131 but i i i just wanted to to point that, that out in case we get any feed, feedback uh, down the road. Thanks. Larry? Uh, just once again, I totally agree with you, John. I would not put it in the baseline features. Okay. I'm not seeing any other hands, which, uh, so if, if you have a counterpoint to any of these, speak now. John? Along with what Larry's saying, that baseline feature should be eliminated from all of those 13 point. Like 13.1, 13.2, so forth. And so when we're talking about the ag buffer in general, are we 
generally referring to the east side of the ag buffer since the north side has mostly that water channel. And does that need to be specified in this? So for me, I think it's fine to just be general about the ag buffer. Okay, that's fine. John? So I'd actually the, like the hedgerows to be a baseline feature. Uh, and the reason why is um, two years ago when we did, did this, I met with a uh, professor at, at UC Davis, um, oh, I'm blanking on her, ha Haven Kerr. Uh, and she really made an impression on me about how important hedgerows could be to a development that they can provide a lot of habitat for, uh, and that they, and then further that they act as these like barriers between um, the ag land and the, the development, which is good both ways. It, you know, it screens the ag land and keeps things from blowing into the, into the project. But I think even more so it protects the ag land from trash blowing out into them because it, it can collect into the hedgerows somewhat. So um, I, I guess I would argue that I would, and I think that they agreed to it as a baseline feature last time, but we could simplify it uh, and take out all of the species specific stuff so that it's a much simpler baseline feature. John? So Colin, I, uh, I agree the whole concept of, and this is what I was saying earlier too, is the whole concept of the hedgerow planting. That's, 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 that's pretty important. I think, again, the public would, 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 would feel good about that and they'd like to see it. Uh, but I think uh, 13 and 13.2 uh, and 13.3 probably could be uh, put it together because there is some overlapping language as we speak. The species, I don't think we need the species. Uh, I, I, I almost think that the entire 13.3 can be eliminated, I think. Tony? I just wanted to say whose idea was it to talk about hedgerows? Because that's that's a really good, I think that's a really good idea. And I don't see it very often being brought up in these planning. Um, I'm new to this, but I don't see it very often being brought up as both a barrier and windbreak and all. Yeah, so that's hats off to whoever whose idea that was. Haven, Haven Kerr, a oh. professor at UC Davis. So any other, is there any suggestions on, I, I think the simplest thing is to leave it as is and leave the top one as the development agreement and the bottom one as a baseline feature. Um, and that we can, that I would be good with it like this and, and continuing. But if other people have a strong opinion, please raise your hand, Larry. Um, not a strong opinion, but I did want to, so when it says mitigate foot traffic, are you actually trying to say limit foot traffic or impede foot traffic? Mitigate is mm. repair. Yeah. I think impede is a better word. Okay. Mm. I mean, again, I, we're trying to put a lot in the baseline features, but I'm happy whatever people want to do. So or is, it, or is there anyone who objects to 13 through 13.3 as stands? Raise your hand. Okay, I'm going to go through and, and accept all the changes. Is 
and uh, 14. Jim, I suspect you might have an opinion. Do you want to speak? Well, in the riparian area, native plants may in fact be climate uh, ready. So uh, I, I can go either way on this. It's just that, uh, you know, native plants are adapted to our current climate and they may not be adapted to the future climate. But uh, in the riparian zone, maybe that's not an issue. Okay. Any other thoughts? Or well, let me let me uh, qualify my comment. We're assuming that the riparian open space will have some water in it, and given drought and so on, maybe it won't. I don't know, but. Uh, <laughs> Let's let's hope that it has water in it and assume that. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Well, and maybe it has water in it for part of the year, right? Not all of the year. So. Okay. I'm not seeing any strong hands or opinions. Um, so this next one's a bit of a doozy. This is the longest one. Uh, so let's uh, let's take it from the from the top and maybe do A, B, and C to start with. John. I know Larry had the, had a, earlier a comment about C, so we might want to look at that one. Yeah, I, I'm going to say just um, let's incorporate that comment now and then. Uh... Larry? Oh, your hand went. That was it. Thank you. Yeah. John, I see your hands up. Is there more? No. Jim? I'm wondering, is, is much of this already in our ordinance? I mean, is this somewhat redundant? It's sort of saying they have to follow the rules? Uh, I think no. Uh, but the good news is, I think uh, all three of these first things were they agreed to as baseline features previously. So we're, and I think that they suggested them all again now. Um, in fact, I think that some of the language was lifted right from their recommendations. So we're, we're basically saying, we like your recommendations on this. So I'm not seeing any other hands. So with- Well, Colin, go, can go I, ahead. Can, yep. Um, as we go through these, just to save us time, the, we, should, we should take out what we don't think are the baseline features as we go through these. Okay. So I'm gonna accept these first three, which is just the one change, and then we'll move down to D. We'll, we'll keep going. Uh, let's see, the D is a baseline feature. And then I think after that, they're all development agreements. So let's just do D. John? Yeah, I, well, yeah, I think A, B, and C are baseline features as well, I believe. Yeah, yeah I think M, M is probably the only other baseline feature. Okay, Larry? Um, so D, I think that's a good place to put um, language about, let's see, I think I had some language. Do, 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 submit a formal landscape plan. Um, shall submit a version of the formal landscape plan that is the property of the city of Davis and is available for distribution to the public.
Larry, would you want to combine that somehow with H? Or put it, you know, because yes. H covers part of what you're saying, but not all of it, perhaps. Yeah, and my H, I had a comment on H that I don't know a hard copy and an electronic copy online. Like, are we trying to save trees or? <laughs> what, what, what are the concerns? Alan, Alan Hirsch raises this concern a lot is that people can't take a copy of this and go to the uh, site. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a transparency issue. Right, so he's saying if he was able to get a copy of it, a hard copy, then he or anybody else can actually go to the site and look at this. Yeah. And, and so that's what I think the hard copy was about. If there's another way of doing that, that'd be good. But I, mean, I, I think that was his general concern. Having it available online as downloadable. Okay, if we could say, uh, okay, so how about a uh, landscaping plan? Uh, uh, all just, available for, for 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 downloading, you know, something. Well, I would just say know. available to the public, whether it's hard copy, e copy, whatever. I mean, no, but he would he would tell you. I think he would tell you that when you say available to the public, he's gone in and they won't let him. They won't give him anything. They won't give him a. a that a, that's because it's copyrighted by the by the developer. That's that was right. that was my comment that the that the a version of the plan that is a that is owned by the city of Davis, the property of the city of Davis, and is available for distribution to the public. Right. So we could put that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that H and whatever D they they contain some of the same language. Mm -hmm. so I'm just. Yep. Yeah. So. What I would suggest actually is, is we add Larry's language to D and that uh, actually the rest of H is really in the weeds. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, that I don't think it, we necessarily need it. Okay. Yeah. Larry, you want to email me your language real quick? Then I can, it looked like you read it right from something that I can just pick it right up and add it in. Okay, if that's faster. Uh, well, or just tell me what it is, either way. Um, all right. A version of the landscape plan. Wait, where are we? So the tree commission will be... A version of the landscape plan uh, shall be Oh, well, it doesn't fit that sentence structure, but <laughs> um, a version of the landscape plan that is the property of the city of Davis and is available for distribution to the public. Sorry. And is available for distribution to the public. shall be included. Shall be submitted by the applicant, by the developer. Provided, let's, let's say provided. And two L's and shall. And the other math or spelling in public. Right. Of the public should be to the public. Right. By the public and for the public. <laughs> Are we getting it? Yeah. But at least I'm spelling pu uh, public right. Yeah, That's right. A bad one. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. Okay, plan that is the property of the city of Davis and is available for distribution to the public shall be provided. Yeah. I like that. Um, so, property of the city of Davis. That doesn't necessarily mean that Davis owns the intellectual property right. It may be uh, that they own the paper copy. Does that make sense? 
if you want to say own the copyright, that's what I meant. So yeah, that's the point of this is that we get around that. We can't give it to you because it's copyrighted. Like, I, I'm good with it as it is. Okay. Um, so that's D. Any uh, counterpoints before I accept the, is that, Alan, do you have expertise in, uh, in this area that you might bring to us? Um, not really, no. Yeah. Okay. I, I would say though that um, there will never be a single landscape plan. There'll, there'll be little beat, little pieces at a time because they won't know at any one time before the end. They won't know for years what the final build out plan will be. They will know what the zoning elements are and the associated um, landscaping opportunities for those are, but, they, but, but there, there's not gonna be any um, early landscape plan to review and, until they know how the site is gonna be built out. So, that is so so, but, but, but there will be, there will at some point be, you know, sort of conceptual ideas of, of you know, when, when they know more about the project and they, and they start to get commitments from, um, from um, developers within the property, then, then they'll be able to put together a kind of conceptual plan that will be probably close to the time um, that they go for permits for, for specific they're gonna they're, they're gonna get permits for many 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 permits for each little phase of the of the project and like you know probably two different ones for housing and maybe twenty for for the um, commercial spaces so each one will probably come with an associated landscape plan. Only, you, only you, looking back from from the end of the project would you have a comprehensive landscape plan. So you need to make sure that your rules are applicable to you know each little property um, bubble within the project. You do not disappoint, Alan. That's an excellent point. <laughs> uh, so I see your hand, Larry. I'm going to just quickly say we could improve this by saying plans that are. Is that what you were going to comment to, Larry? Or maybe all plans, but yeah, change it yeah. to plural. Done. Great, great point, Alan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna not seeing unless there's hands. I'm gonna go ahead and accept this, and we can. Uh, oh, and we agreed that we would take out H. I think. Oh, too much. Thank you for bearing with me while I try to edit on the fly here. Uh, okay, so that leaves E, F, and G. If we wanna take these guys right now, if anyone has comments on E, F, and G. John? So, so Colin, if I could just say, and this <clears throat> might not fly, but it was just a, an idea uh, on E, uh, what we were trying to uh, say here was that um, since this isn't an innovative uh, project and there's going to be riparian and there's going to be ch chances to to really do to do something uh, innovative, perhaps with planting on the site, that we were thinking, would there be any benefit of uh, of, of having these landscape plans reviewed, say by the the person who Colin talked about the hedgerows or. Uh, or riparian ecologist, you know, just to make sure that we were that these plans, uh, you know, went sort of beyond the the, the arborist, but but went to people uh, to talk about the ecology or the or the, 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 the habitat of this whole thing. This may be a wild idea that that that, that really won't won't work, but that was the thought behind it.
I'm not seeing any other hands, which I'm taking to mean that this is probably pretty good as it is, or that people are getting tired, or both. Um, so well, I didn't mean to take out H or take out I. So moving past H to uh, the, the next group here, I through K. If there are any comments, questions, concerns, counterpoints. Larry? Um, given our previous change a while ago in L, um, the growth is required must be in the irrigation plan, must be indicated on the landscape plans, just for kicks, the publicly available landscape plans. not seeing any hands. I see people looking at the screen reading though. So I want to make sure everybody has enough time to if they're processing. But uh, unless there's a someone who wants to say anything else, I think we can accept publicly available and, and keep going. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and make the deletion of H a permanent deletion while we move on. Okay, so looking at M through O. Any comments on M through O? With, with everything else as a development plan, do you want M to be baseline or, or development plan? Oh, I, I, I think that's a good point, Jim. I think development plan is probably right. Is there anyone, any counterpoint to that? Jim, do you, I, you have your hand up? Anything else? Yeah, I'm a bit concerned about how detailed this is getting to be for baseline. Uh, oh, okay. So they're all development plan. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think this would all be way too detailed for baseline for sure. Might be some of you could put, could someone could argue some of it's a, a little specific, but. Uh, you know, considering having recently reviewed that uh, planning teaching session, that this is our opportunity to do something that's different than uh, other code because the, um, the zoning will be changed. And after the zoning is changed, it's hard to ask for anything different unless they want to change the zoning again. Okay. Well, uh, if there aren't any other comments, that brings us to the end of uh, 16. John? Yeah, can I, um, can I just bring up uh, Alan's, Alan Hirsch's comment about should we add something in here about the required uh, shaping and, and pruning of trees? I don't, think, I don't think that's specifically mentioned in all these uh, points. Um, I, 
and maybe it's not here, but I, I you know, yeah. during the first five years or however long, maybe Rob could help us with that, um, you know, that they, they have to, you know, I don't know how to say it, but that there should be proper shaping and pruning. Larry? I think that's go getting too far for this document. Um, I know that, so the, Alan, the, the pictures Alan showed, we see them all the time. We see them, in fact, every time a, a pair, I, I always forget the first name of that pair. Mm -hmm. I always want to say emperor, and I know that's not right. Um, Bradford. Bradford, yeah. Bradford. Every time a Bradford, that's how they were pruned. Yes, it was wrong. And we don't do it that way anymore. And there's hopefully at some point going to be a tree technical manual. This is not the place for the tree technical manual. That's my view. Here, here. I, I agree. I, I appreciate Alan's comments and his and his uh, slides, but I think it's it's not in a it's not develop how to prune a tree is not development agreement material. Well, and, I don't think we're saying I don't think he's saying or I'm saying how to prune a tree. We're just saying that um, um, that it it should be in here. I mean, if we have if we have any of these letters A through O, I mean, these one could say these are all in the wood in the weeds, uh, but they're not. Uh, so, I think to uh, you know if we're if we're giving him for irrigation and landscaping plans and you know blah blah blah, I I uh, I, I don't think it's uh, it would be bad to have a requirement that that they they would need to shape and prune these trees especially during the, uh, the first five years or, or how, however. I mean, if we're gonna go out and say they should look at them and monitor them and blah, 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 uh, you know, and that the hole should be big, big, uh, be big enough and F, uh, planting parking areas, you know, will save the pavement, pavement to uh, accommodate the tree's varietal intended size. I don't, I don't think that's much different than, uh, than saying that the, the, the trees will be uh, uh, planted and pruned to to promote a uh, a uh, a robust canopy. I, I I think that's that's very important. So I see David's hand and Tracy's hand. David, then Tracy. Uh, despite Alan's hobby horse, that is the practice that does not need to be pointed out. That is going to be if the trees are being periodically inspected, they are going to get small tree care. And just because Alan has seen examples of poor small tree care does not mean that that is the, the common practice. Yes, it happens, but the city of Davis does not encourage that and it does do small tree care. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Tracy, I see your hand. Yeah, I think that um, John raises a valid um, point, and um, you know, to Alan's point, um, pruning a tree, caring for the tree, is a part of its something that it needs to grow properly. Um, I wouldn't have a problem just adding the word pruning, say to L, where it says irrigation and a plan for monitoring and maintaining a functioning irrigation infrastructure. We could just say irrigation and pruning or something like that. Um, irrigation and a plan for pruning and monitoring, maintaining a functioning irrigation or just a functioning infrastructure. Because I think you know pruning a tree is just as important as, well, Maybe not, but I was going to say as water, but maybe not. I don't know. I, I after hearing what David had to say, I, I've been. I'm sorry. Oh, you muted. Yep. Yeah, sorry about that. I was just after what David after listening to what David had to say, I'm sort of reconsidering my original thought. My original thought was I agreed with John and Alan that pruning is just as important as anything else when it comes to maintaining a proper functioning environment for a tree safety you know for the environment um and so i was thinking adding pruning into l but now after hearing what david had to say you know maybe we don't 
I'm not sure now. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go and then John. Um, so I appreciate the thoughts and I appreciate what David had to say. Um, I don't, I think L is specifically about irrigation. So I don't, I wouldn't want to add it there. I would say that earlier we went over and we have um, other language in this document about neglect and uh, negligence that uh, I think if a tree were negligently pruned, it would be covered under that other language. Um, so I don't think if it were to cause, you know, failure, then it would, it would already be covered under there. John? Well, I guess, um, and, and David, I, I appreciate what you're saying, really. Um, I, uh, I think with all the other stuff in this document, uh, whether or not it's practice or not practice, and, and I, I understand it's not practice with the city, you know, to, to, to not do this and not do this care. Uh, but it, it could be said to he, nonetheless in, in here, these are, these are our recommendations as a tree commission. These are things that we find that are important. And I think the more we could lay this stuff out in as many documents as we can, uh, then, then, then our view of that world uh, uh, gets gets out there and gets uh, gets more attention. I, I don't think it hurts uh, to uh, to put that out there. And I think if if it is being done well, then then it's being done well, and that's great. And if it's the policy to do it well, uh, but I think that I think that you know things that we're talking about in the two by for shade uh, include you know things like maintaining the health of the tree to to maximize uh, canopy cover. So I, I think that fits into all, to a lot of aspects of this, of this pro project, you know, and it's not just necessarily to prevent failure of limbs, but it, it's also to, uh, to um, you know, to enhance and, and optimize, if you will, the, uh, the, uh, the, the crown and the, and the canopy, canopy. So, since words, I mean, we've already had 10 pages. Um, I, I think it's an important enough topic just to put another, another bullet in there. Uh, if we're looking for a compromise, I, um, uh, before I say anything, I'll let uh, Larry. If it, will move, if it will move the discussion on, I will yield. Okay. Uh, so a possible compromise that maybe would, would do this is in K, we could say all tree plantings and pruning must comply with the ANSI A300 standards. Rob, what do you think about that? We could say all tree care and all get rid care. of tons of stuff. Do you have a thought on that, Rob? I mean, I think all that would be covered in multiple points already previously made. Yeah. I think the more redundant you get, the less people are going to want to actually follow the recommendations if you're saying the same thing over and over again. Okay, then 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 I'll, I'll be willing to, uh, to to back off from that though. Okay. Uh, so I think. After robust discussion, um, we are going to accept the change uh, that this that M is in the development agreement, and we're going to leave. Um, oh, no, I did that right. And we're going to leave the pruning clipped or pruned for now. Um, Okay. If yeah, I a... guess I, I'm sorry I'm to jump in. I don't see any other hands nope. raised. I just, ahead, think, I just do think that there is some merit to what John is saying. And um, I do understand what Rob is saying too, that if we're just repeating ourselves, people are just gonna sort of bypass it. But then also John is saying, the more that we say it, you know, maybe it wasn't picked up in this, you know, but maybe it'll be picked up over here. Um, 
I don't know. I, I think I liked your suggestion, Colin, of just adding pruning into, um, well, you said it was K. I think it's pretty harmless to do that. And it does make me feel a little better because I think that pruning is a big part of it that does get ignored. So it, the letter shifted its J at this point. Larry, do you have a thought? I'm fine, pruning, yeah. sure, add it. Does that do it, John? No, John, that you're doesn't muted. make sense, does it? It doesn't make sense because of the back oh, no. sorry. No, it doesn't. Just have K, uh, 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 pruning will also follow or at the end of it, if we're back filling pruning, you know, pruning will also follow the ANSN, ASIA A300 standards. That's That's fine. Does that make sense, Rob? Have I introduced something that's nonsensical or is that is there such a thing as ANSI A300 pruning standards? It should be the ANSI, not ANSAI. Oh yeah. Are we good? Yep. Looking for a hand if anyone has a counterpoint. Okay. Phasing. So uh, I'm going to jump in and just kind of say the, you know, the developer spells out the all the different way phases uh, that you know the development will be built out in. Uh, I think the thought behind this is that the sooner we can get the trees planted along the um, bike path in particular and the hedgerow, the better for everybody involved. The sooner they're taller, the sooner the bike path is shaded. Um, and I will note that the, the, that the current project moves up the, uh, bike, the peripheral bike path in the ag buffer by a phase. So I think it was in the very, I think it was in the last phase previously, uh, which is kind of would be a huge bummer, right? You, it could be 20 years between when the housing was built and when the bike path and was built and when there were trees planted along the bike path. So we're, we're asking that those trees get planted early and often. So any thoughts about this? Tracy? I am definitely in agreement with trees should be planted as soon as possible wherever people go, especially along that um, ag buffer, you know, where the, you know, farming can really be, you know, a huge nuisance um, for people. So I do agree with the, um, the phasing of the trees and that they should be incorporated with where people go. Okay, any other points, uh, any counterpoints? I see your hand, Tra uh, Tracy, but I'm assuming it's just still up. It is still up, but I did want to make another point regarding, um, you know, the developer made a, a big point about, you know, planting trees in their appropriate places. And, must, you know, and, and I do think that that is a consideration. And when we're doing things in phases, sometimes they're not done in appropriate order. Um, so I think the area along the, um, the buffer, it would be easy enough. And then the other areas where people go, um, there, it might be a little more difficult, you know, considering um, fire hydrants or, you know, underground infrastructure or whatever. Um, and so this phase one, is this primarily, this is, this includes all of those things, the sidewalks, the roads, it's not just in the ag buffer. And is it appropriate to stay, say that trees should be planted that early 
I mean, you see my point? Like I, I'm, I'm afraid if it's done too much out of order, you know, it's gonna be like planting a non-drought tolerant tree. It may not last very long. So just trying to be respectful of that, just to make it a functioning, a functioning recommendation. So from my perspective, the, I, I would, I mean, I think I, I was really happy with what the previous recommendation was on, on phasing. It, it was basically for the ag buffer and the park. Um, and the, but uh, the subcommittee added in a lot of other parts into phase one. If it were me, I would focus on just the, the bike path in the ag buffer, frankly. Um, the other, the other plantings, like you can't, you can't start planting the trees until you know where the buildings go. So, uh, those are my thoughts. So if there was a, if people wanted to simplify, I would reduce it to the peripheral bike path that we asked to put in phase one. I would agree with that, Colin. I mean, can we say something that, you know, and anything that doesn't cause, you know, if there's nothing inhibiting the trees from being planted, once they get to that point where they know where sidewalks will be and all that other stuff, then those trees should be planted. Is there any way to word that? Or does that even make sense? I'm getting so tired. <laughs> it's a long day, right? Um, uh, I think for, I don't know quite how I would word that if I'm open to other people chiming in, but I guess I would, if it were up to just me, I would say, I would change this to trees on the peripheral bike path. Um, I see David nodding his head. John? Colin, what about the, the ag area and the, well, the hedgerows? The hedgerows and the bike path, right? Yeah, I would leave the hedgerow section. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. good. I mean, I think the hedgerows, like if the hedgerows are built, it's gonna prevent construction debris from blowing into the ag fields to some extent, so. The sooner that happens, the better. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and and uh, make this change. A developer would want to plant trees as soon as they could, right? Or is that not always the case? Never mind. Forget I even said that. I mean, landscaping can be delayed, I guess, with a project, but. Okay. Are there any other comments on phasing? Okay, not seeing any, uh, we can move up to the tree care guarantees for success. Raise your hands if you have questions, comments, concerns, counterpoints. I just had a quick question um, regarding those 300 trees that may or may not be planted on the property. Um, does the monitoring of those trees, are those indefinite as well? Or does the developer just pay for the fees to maintain those offsite trees up front and then is done with it? And it is, and then it will just be those trees that are actually on the project. So my understanding 
is there's not necessarily a commitment from the developer at this time for trees planted over those bike paths uh, at all. Um, although the city standard would dictate that the there be trees planted, it's possible that the city would plant them. Um, I, I don't think we know enough. And Marissa, maybe you have uh, insight for us on this. Um, but uh, I, I don't, I don't know that those the offsite trees are going to be owned by the developer. So requesting that the developer maintain trees that the developer doesn't own or and isn't on proper property that they control, um, I think is kind of problematic. So that's kind of an incentive for the developer to not plant the trees on their property. So I think that they need to be made accountable to some degree for the total number of trees and that they just pay a fee, whatever that fee is determined to be, and then and then they're released from the responsibility. But I think that they should at least pay for the, you know, total cost of the annual inspections or the every five year or every 10 year inspections. So, so Colin, what, uh, go, go, go back to TC1. There's something said, there's something said about that there. And the offsite trees will be subject to an annual maintenance fee. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, Therese, uh John, you have a, a hand? No? Any other questions, comments, concerns about 17? I'm just gonna comment that I think B is a, a, an interesting one. The, the baseline, we're saying that the baseline features, that there will be financial penalties stated in the baseline feature, but the, what they are will be spelled out in the development agreement. So I'm not seeing any hands about this one, which suggests that we can move down to 18. Any thoughts, questions, concerns, counterpoints to 18? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands on that one either. 19 is our last one. Any uh, questions, comments on 19? Tracy, then Larry. Okay, thank you. In B, is this where we wanted to put in a little more detail? I mean, it, it, it is a, just a part of the development agreement. Um, so I don't know if it's necessary, but this is where Alan had made that suggestion where the trees are monitored every you know year for the first five years. And then he goes into you know every other year until the tree's 10 and then every three years after you know, after its 11th year. Is this where we'd want to add that? Larry, I see your hand. Yeah, um, so D, 
I'm not sure is a complete sentence. The first sentence, cost of any new trees and their proper follow-up for the next phase of tree life. Okay. Should be borne by the developer or property owner. Property owner, let's say property owner and we don't have to say and, and, and all the time. Current property owner might be more, but again, wordsmithing for a recommendation is. I, I, I'm gonna keep it simple as property owner, is that cool? Yep, follow me. I mean, it's probably, you probably mean property owner at the time of the cost, the cost is incurred or. That's what yeah. I would wanna put in there because who knows how many times these people are gonna pass off ownership and then, you know, pass off the responsibility and yada, yada. So I think it needs to be defined that the person that the, you know, whoever is the owner of the property at the time that the tree is diagnosed or whatever, then those are the people that incur the fee. Or I, guess I, would, I guess I would say that can be uh, a matter between the property owners. The, That's fine. Yeah. Any answers for Tracy's question, John? Yeah, well, I, I just want to re bring up her question. Uh, when we, when the subcommittee first went through this, we were thinking of one year for the first five years and every other year there, thereafter. And now uh, Alan Hirsch brought up this whole, you know, um, after I forget how many years, 10 years or whatever, then it would, it would be three times. So we've got potentially two different uh, uh, schedules here. Do we want to, uh, do we want to talk about that? Do we want to go the one that we have in there every year for five and every other year there, 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 thereafter? Or do we want to go to this, you know, every third, third year down the road? So I guess that my only input on that is this section is on the reimbursement protocol uh, to the city from the developer. And it doesn't address any of the scheduling stuff that that's addressed earlier in the document. And that if that's something we want to do, we probably should be looking back up where we specified the inspections and the purpose, et cetera. Yeah, Colin, that's, that's, a, that, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. You know? So what I propose then is we, we address TC19 and we address the final part, the burrowing owl statements, and then uh, we can, and then as our last act of the night, we'll go back up and look to see if we want to add that in. Does that, does that work for you and for John, Tracy? Yeah, the, the only reason I say it here was because in, at, you know, under C, this is an annual biennial report. So wherever we address it, we're going to have to come back here anyway. Okay. So. Okay. That's, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so actually, we'll come back. Actually, Colin, sorry. Yeah. Um, if you just say in C, just say review of all tree reports, then then wherever we change, wherever we schedule, it gets incorporated here. Yeah. Excellent suggestion. Problem solver. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any other suggestions for this section? Not seeing any hands. Um, so the, the very last part here uh, is different than the rest. Uh, and it's, I, this, is, this grew out of the previous project um, the previous the previous project, uh, you know, there were there were some burrowing owl issues more with the previous project. The it was a they were using part of the uh, 25 acres that was owned by the city where there were actually burrowing owls that lived there. Um, I don't think any of the current biological surveys or the most recent biological surveys say there are burrowing owls in the project. But ultimately, 
it's not really up to the tree commission to answer for burrowing owls. So I think that, but the um, Open Space and Habitat Commission has made recommendations about the burrowing owls. So this is just basically a supportive statement that we don't intend to have trees where there should be burrowing owls. Does anyone have any, I think it's basically exactly the same as before. Does anyone have questions or comments, concerns for this one? Larry? Um, maybe it's worth saying we intend no conflict between trees and burrowing owls, but again, and the developer did say that they were planning on installing a burrowing owl den I, or burrows or something. Anyway. Yeah. I don't know if we need to say that or not, but there it is. The John. Yeah, I would say that uh, these decisions, you know, the taking apart the silos, if you will, that's that 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 will be done by other people in the city, city staff. Uh, I don't think we need to say anything about the owls. I I don't think it's 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 it's, it's relevant, and it opens us up. I mean, maybe the owl. Maybe we're going to have a, a disagreement with the other uh, the commission, you know. So I don't, I don't think we want to necessarily have to say this because uh, it'll be dealt, it'll be dealt with. And also, like I say, if we don't agree with them or they don't agree with us, then I don't, I, I we, we don't have this, this commitment on on paper. So I would just let it go. Tony, then Tracy. Yeah, um, that's that's a good point. Um, in some ways, and maybe it's superficial. I mean, uh, burning our burning our habitat is kind of at cross purposes for what we're trying to do in, in with planting trees and providing um, you know, canopy cover. Their habitat does not, you know, precludes that. And I would hate to see um, a developer use that as an excuse not to plant trees, right? And um, so I was, so I'm a little conflicted on whether we should even, yeah, like was said earlier, even bring it up or not. Sorry, it's a dog. Um, if it were, if we're not going to, if it's, I see what's being done here, trying to reach across the aisle or sort of reach across and you know show support for the other commissioners, but um, I don't know if it's it's if it strategically makes sense. I'm I'm, just, I'm a little conflicted on whether you should even include the statement or not. I guess. Tracy, then Larry. Thanks. I agree. I agree with Tony. Um, and uh, I agree with John. And I was here when this was originally put in, and it was more of an issue at the time. And um, there was concern about this conflict between trees and the owls and the burrowing owls. And I don't really feel that is an issue. I don't, I'm not exactly sure why. I guess, Colin, you kind of explained it already, but. Um, I would be fine removing this because I, I do think it raises more questions for this second round than it does anything else. It's sort of um, because it just hasn't been a topic like it was the other time. Um, so I would I would I'm leaning more towards just removing the statement. Larry. So. The burrowing owl is a native species, and one of the reasons it's a native species is because, as Rob has said several times, the native tree in this area, except for riparian corridors, is grass. So I agree, I am a tree lover, like everybody on this commission, but burrowing owl habitat in Davis has been reduced to almost, and maybe now perhaps, nothing, and I don't want that. Trees are not my only issue. Um, the environment as a whole is my issue and endangered species are an issue. And I am, I would like to leave it in. Yeah, I mean, so I, I've been following the burrowing owl issue for a long time. And I, I, I really, they're a, they're a bellwether species around development. 
Um, you know, I remember when UC Davis wanted to put in the stadium originally and uh, they couldn't do it initially because there were burrowing owls there and then magically they all disappeared. And I remember when uh, Mace, the uh, Mace Ranch Park was disked by not Dan Ramos's de development company, but his dad's development company while there were owls in the burrows. Uh, the burrowing owls have, have borne the brunt of our development, and but I don't think that it's our position as the tree commission to make a statement um, supporting the burrowing owls, but we can at least say that we don't want trees planted in their habitat. And the, the open, I attended the Open Space Commission and the Open Space Commission uh, accepted and recommended that the um, artificial burrowing owl uh, uh, den be put in on the, it's on the south east corner of the project. Now, I have no idea if that's the best place for it, but that's where, that's where open space wants it. They're more expert on this than me. Um, so I still think that it's appropriate to leave this in. Um, we're not asking for it to be a baseline feature. We're not asking for it to be in the, uh, development agreement, we're just saying we don't want to conflict, with, we don't want the trees to conflict with the owl habitat, um, such little as there is. Uh, I see Tony and Larry. Tony and then Larry. I think Larry had his hand up first. Okay, Larry, you want to? Okay, your mic is on, it doesn't matter. Yeah. To make recommendations without thinking about the consequences of those recommendations is irresponsible in my opinion. So, and just as a, a note from the chair, uh, if I if people have talked a lot, I often call on people who haven't spoken as much. So I don't always go in the order that you put up your hand uh, because I'm trying to encourage dialogue. So okay. Tony and John. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, right. So I guess my final thought on this would be um, I would hope that the other commission, the Open Space Commission, wouldn't see the Tree Commission as you know wanting to just run roughshod over burrowing owl habitat and would give us the charitable benefit of the doubt here. And if a but if a statement um, in support of burrowing owl habitat is would go a long way in assuring that, then I'm 100% all for it. Well, John? Yeah, I'm going to agree with Larry and, and Tony that yes, if it's going to help, I will do it. I'll support it. I guess my concern was as a commissioner, I've never heard in all the meetings and being on the subcommittee, I've never heard this 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 issue being 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 brought up. So my comment was, it seemed to be coming at the, an issue that 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 no one was was bringing up. If it is an issue still of concern in this project, yeah, then then, then I'm all for this 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 uh, this 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 statement. It was just that uh, I never heard it was an issue. Okay, um, I'll represent to you that the, it, it was addressed at the Open Space Commission uh, meeting that, and which is the appropriate place for it to be addressed. So, um, but I, what I'm hearing I think is a general consensus that this is okay, uh, which means we can do our last thing, which is if any, if, uh, which is to look at the maintenance schedules and uh, if anyone can, if anyone's looked and can direct me to where they want to do that, I'm going to accept these last changes here. And any lingering ones as we go up. So sorry for the jumping around. Uh, so if anyone has is looking at the document and wants to tell me where they want to add add this language.
I'm, I'm sorry, I was on mute. It's, it's a it's TC10. Okay, uh, second line, annual cycle, first five years is established thereafter biennial, biennial. Uh, so if we want to have a discussion of that, I'm, I'm not, you know, yeah, I don't know if I have an opinion at the moment, but, but I think the choices are that or after, I think, and Tracy, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you or Alan, uh, are talking about every, Every three year, every three times a year, after ten years, right. uh, up to ten years, and then after that, yeah, three years. So if you know, I mean, I could go with with uh, with, with either. Um, okay. Um, so give me good direction as to what to change to uh, Tracy, then Larry. Okay, so maybe. Um... So the maintenance, health, and growth of all on-site trees will be monitored and evaluated by the arborist on an annual cycle for the first five years of the, as the tree is established, period. Great. Therefore, or thereafter, the inspection shall be on a biennial cycle until the tree's 10th year. And then on a, uh, and then every, the tree shall be inspected um, every three years thereafter. For proper health and maintenance and pruning and irrigation and all that. Larry? Um, I believe the city trees are on a seven year maintenance cycle. We might want to consider coordinating with that or not. I think yeah, it should Larry. coordinate. Yeah, Larry, Larry, I think, well, you, you, you know this, right? That's, I mean, that's when they go out and maintain trees where this, this whole thing is about having an arborist go out there and, and, and you, 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 you monitor the trees. So I, I look at them as two different, two different things. Okay. Rob, this is your area of expertise. Do you have any input for us? Um, I mean, it's really up to what you guys want. The, John's right, the, that's a maintenance cycle. They are inspected, but if you guys want them inspected, you know, just to be inspected, it could be a three-year cycle. Cool. Full Employment Act for arborists? Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, any counterpoints to what we have here? I, I don't have a counterpoint, but I would just recommend do a word search. For by for 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 bi, bi, biennial, and see if we need to adjust this language elsewhere. One of one. That's it. Okay. Good. That's easy. That's all the inspections right there too. Okay, uh, Larry? I would like to move that we accept the recommendations from the subcommittee as amended this evening and put them forward to city council. Okay, I second that. Yeah, yep. before we, we do that, um, have we, uh, have we gone through and changed appropriately the uh, the, the baseline recommendations versus the uh, the development agreement recommendations? I don't think we've I don't think we we were doing that as we went along. 
Okay. Uh, so if we're going to do that, I suspect we would need to withdraw the motion to go back. Yes. Um, um, uh, um, unless everybody is, is, is okay with the way they are. I could withdraw the motion, sure, and remake it later. Whatever's faster. Well, if I may, I thought we did go through and change what we wanted to change. Um, so I'm not sure if there's much more, unless we wanted to move remove some of the baseline features. Well, that's it. I mean, TC2, we all agreed, I think that that was not a, a baseline feature. And and on our sheet, we, we have it as a baseline feature. So I think we need to look at this um, and, re and replace them with development agreement. So I guess I would say, I know for me, I was looking at it as we go through uh, to speak generally and then to speak specifically to TC2. Um, this was recommended as a baseline feature before and accepted as a baseline feature and included as a baseline feature previously. So I, I wouldn't wanna backpedal on that. Okay, okay. I just, you know, I didn't know mm -hmm. if we were going through them or not. So if everybody thinks we were, that, that's fine. Yeah. I, just I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm open to whatever the commission wants to do. If people want to go back through and look again, I'm totally fine with it. Um, I, you know, I'm, however, however long, uh, however long it takes, I'm totally willing to put in the time tonight. Although I apologize to Rob for it. If we, if I could just ask a question. If, and the other staff. And yes, this is true. I, I, the, 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 the city doesn't have to accept our recommendation, right? So, Larry, I know your concern, and it's a valid one. That you know, the document for the ballot would be huge. Um, do, anything that we put in here, does it have to go in there, or does the the city uh, finally get to pick and choose which are baseline and which aren't? These are not recommendations. These are recommendations to city council. City council will decide what goes into the baseline features and what goes into the project development. So I guess the answer is that, that, you, that the city council is going to decide this. Right. My issue is in communication, more is not always more. Right. So what I'm going to suggest, and I'm sorry, but let's just quickly go through these. And you know, there really aren't that many. And do we want it a baseline, or, or or don't we want it as a baseline? All right. Uh, so Jim Carl, and then Larry. Oh. Yeah, Jim. Seems to me that we talked about this as we went along. Okay, if we did, that's fine. I, I'm. I'm, 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 I was just I, I just wanted to be sure. So Jim, if if that was your recommendation, I did defer to, to I mean your remembrance that's that's fine with me. I just wanted to bring it up. Larry. Uh, so John, are you will so okay, I will resubmit the motion that we accept the subcommittee's recommendations as revised this evening um, for the whole tree commission to go before city council. And I'll second that. All right, uh, we have a motion and a second. Um, I'm gonna go down the list uh, as it appears on the website. Uh, Jim Kramer. Oh wait, I'm sorry, you have your hand up. Well, I was just wondering, do we, when do we have public comment? Uh, so technically we have, so it's a, this is a special meeting where we continued and Rob, you'll correct, you know, I'm hoping you'll correct me on the parliamentary procedure if I'm off at all on this. Um, we had public, a uh, general public comment at the beginning of the meeting, mm -hmm. but technically this item, uh, was continued to a date certain from the previous meeting, which, uh, then doesn't necessarily need to have public doesn't have public comment because the public comment happened at the previous mm -hmm. uh, meeting. Um, but if there is a desire to have public comment, the, you know, that is something that we could just. No, I'm, not, I'm not advocating that. I was just, it was a question. 
Yeah. Rob, do I have that parliamentary? Yeah, there's only, we had public comment already. Yeah. So Colin, my, just my own thought, if anybody's been willing to stick with us all this time, you know, an extra five, six minutes wouldn't, wouldn't be uh, disagreeable to me if the people have, have hung out for this long. Is that a motion, John? Yes. Is that a, so I think technically you would need, you would want to make a substitute motion. Is that is that the right okay. parliamentary procedure? Because we have a motion and a second on the floor, so we have to act on the motion that's on the floor before taking another motion. So we can table the motion, we can withdraw the motion, or you someone could substitute a motion. As I understand the Roberts rules. If that is a substitute motion, John, I will second your substitute motion and withdraw mine. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, okay, so there's a, the motion is to accept public comment uh, at this time. Uh, Jim Kramer? You need a second. Yeah, we uh, have another second. Is, I think, okay, we, I think we have, uh, a motion and a second. Um, Jim? Aye. Tracy? Aye. Tony? Aye. Larry? Aye. John? Aye. David? I'll abstain. And uh, Colin? Uh, aye. Okay, so the motion carries, so We'll take uh, public comment. So I would like to remind folks that are attending the meeting, if you would like to make public comment, please press the raise hand button. I am not seeing any raised hands at this time. Okay, uh, do we have another motion? Is public comment closed? I mean, we, no one. Is yes or no is fine. Yeah, yes, public comment is closed. Great, no I move that we accept hand. the tree commission, or the subcommittee's recommendations with the amendments made this evening and pass them on to city council. I'll second that again. Great, uh, so from the top, uh, Jim Kramer. Aye. Tracy DeWitt. Aye. Tony Gill. Uh, I believe that was an aye. Yeah, I oh, broke up a yes. little on my... Aye, sorry. Uh, it was just digital distortion. I just want to be clear, make sure. Uh, Larry Gunther. Aye. John Ruder. You're muted, John. Uh, I sorry. Yeah. Uh, David Robinson. Aye. And uh, Colin Walsh. Aye. And uh, as this is a formal motion, the alternate doesn't doesn't vote on this one. Um, though I don't, I'm not sure he's still here. Okay. Uh, that concludes this item. Oh, hi, uh, Marissa has her hand up. Um, Marissa? Hi, yeah, I just wanted to say um, thanks for um, taking the time today. Thank you all commission members and uh, Chair Walsh. Um, the applicant appreciates all the time and the hard work and effort you've put in. Um, and I just wanted to formally introduce myself since I didn't get to earlier. Uh, my name is Marissa Fuentes. I work at Taylor and Wiley. Um, it's been a pleasure to be able to listen to you guys um, discuss this project tonight. So thanks. Marissa, thank you very much for sticking with us to the uh, bitter end and the, the triple motion to uh, approve the recommendations. Uh, it's definitely appreciated. And, and please uh, also pass on our, our thanks to uh, uh, Mr. Kiesling as well. Okay. Uh, thank I see. you so much. Good night, guys. Good night. Okay. Uh, Jim and John, I see your, your hands. 
Jim? Well, my understanding, this is Rob's last meeting, and I just want to thank him for all the work he's done. Uh, I appreciate it, and I have, I have valued his advice and his uh, wisdom greatly, and I wish him the uh, best of luck in the future. Here, here. Here, here. I second that. <laughs> So, so yeah, Rob, I, I, I wanted to say the same thing. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we never get to meet in person. Uh, so I don't know what you look like from the waist down. Uh, and, uh, That's and, true. You know, and so, yeah, I've, I've always been very impressed by your, your, uh, your, 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 your level of, of knowledge. Uh, every time we get into something, you seem to be able to, to, to go deeper and, and deeper. So, uh, so I, 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 I've learned a lot from you too. So th th thank you very much. Great. So uh, I thoroughly agree with their comments and I, you, I'm not sure if you heard or not, but I, I uh, commented uh, at city council on Tuesday night, uh, thanking you as well. Um, and I, we are gonna be at a loss for your institutional knowledge. That's, that's for sure. And uh, I don't think anyone, I, uh, we may have someone who, who comes after you, but no one, no one will be able to replace you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Everybody. Yeah. And yeah. I also, Rob, wanna say that you're always so calm and you're always so respectful and kind. And I just wanted you to know that I've always appreciated that even through email, you're very nice. And just wanted to let you know that it's noticed and appreciated. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. So what I'm hearing is discussion that might lead to a motion uh, adjourning in recognition of someone in particular, possibly if someone wants to make a motion. I will make a motion that we adjourn in honor of Rob Kane, an urban forester who taught everybody on this commission a lot and who has served the urban forest of Davis very, very well. I'll second that. Great. Uh, good motion. Okay, uh, starting at the top. Jim Kramer. Aye. Tracy DeWitt. Aye. Tony Gill. Aye. Larry Gunther. Aye. John Ruder. Aye. David Robinson. Aye. Uh, Colin Walsh, aye. And that adjourns our meeting. Thank you, staff. You are, I, I don't have the words. You're amazing. Thank you. And thanks to all the commissioners too. You're yeah, amazing as well. It's a pleasure to be working with everybody who cares so much and is willing to uh, be here at 1010 for the second time. <laughs> yes. 